Welcome everybody to our, what's today's date, November 16th City Commission Work Session. We're so happy to have uh, folks in the audience. Thank you for being here. And we'll call our meeting to order. Um, if everyone will please rise, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So we have um, a couple of really cool presentations this morning. Our first is the 50th anniversary of our Rotary Club of Dunedin North. Um, I will turn that over to Commissioner Kynes. And John, do you want to? And everybody will come up. Come on up. Uh, now, I want to uh, recognize our president, who is John Tornga. Uh, we have Mark Middleton, Chris Gray, and Sherry Kincaid. Very happy to see you this morning. My husband is also a member of uh, a club, the Rotary Club of Dunedin North, So, and I'm a Rotarian with the other. Club, as you all say. The competition. <laughs> whereas the club was chartered, I know they're going to yell at me, whereas the club was chartered on November 21st, 1971, due to the efforts of Reverend Jim, 22 Rotarians, and 10 civic leaders that demonstrated that North Dunedin was ready to support the organization of the Rotary Club of Dunedin North. And whereas sharing Rotary was the Rotary International theme in 1971, through that theme, District 696, now 69050, Governor Hampton Dunn was challenged to form a new club in the Dunedin area. To meet the challenge, District Governor Hampton appointed Reverend Jim Fresh as extension chairman to survey North Dunedin to determine the feasibility of a new club. And whereas a festive charter night was enjoyed by 120 Rotarians and guests at the Dunedin Country Club, Woody Register, knew him well, as first president of the club, introduced District Governor Dunn and past district governors from surrounding cities that came to welcome the new club into the Rotary family. Among the charter members present were future pres presidents of the club, including Andy Marinella, Ted Vetter, Dr. William Hale, Manny Kutsarias, and Dr. John Still. And whereas Dr. Pat Snare was the first female member of the Rotary Club of Dunedin North, and whereas in the following years, the club sponsored and participated in many projects, including completion of the Highlander Park Pavilion, Dunedin Causeway Beautification, Coastal Cleanup, and the Rotary Centennial Nature Center at Honeymoon Island State Park. The club has also sponsored three ambassadorial scholars, a group study exchange member, several Rotary Youth Exchanges, incoming and outgoing, a Rotary volunteer to Western Samoa, and participated in several Rotary Matching Grant humanitarian projects. And whereas today, the club continues to support numerous organizations and activities, such as Habitat for Humanity, Adopt a Road Program, Dunedin Cares Food Pantry, Rotary's Camp Florida, Seminar for Tomorrow's Leaders, which is known as S4TL, Random Acts of Flowers, <coughs> Dunedin New Sailing Association, Dunedin Highland Middle School, Dunedin History Museum, Dunedin Fine Arts Center Youth Scholarship Program, Dunedin's Peace Pole Project, and Rotary's Coins for Alzheimer's Research, known as CART. Now, therefore, I, Deborah Kynes, by virtue of the authority vested in the mayor, Julie ward Bojowski of the city of Dunedin, Florida, and on behalf of the entire city commission, 
do hereby recognize and celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Rotary Club of Dunedin North and invite all citizens of the city of Dunedin to join in wishing the Rotary Club of Dunedin North many more years of successful involvement and support in the community. So I'd like to just say a few words. Is this mic on? I trust. Um, thank you very much for uh, Dunedin, from Dunedin Rotary Club North and all of Rotary for this proclamation. Our Rotary Club is one of 46,000 clubs worldwide. And for more than 110 years, Rotary International has championed peace, fought illiteracy, and poverty, promoted clean water and sanitation, and fought diseases. And of course, this is our club's 50th anniversary. Rotary is known for our fight against polio, and as of now, Afghanistan and Pakistan are the only countries where polio remains endemic. We have begun another fight, this one against Alzheimer. To, uh, to support finding the cure against this disease. Our club remains active in Dunedin. In concert with what we have just communicated, we have provided the following in the first 15 days of this month of November. Last Saturday, we detrashed two miles of Alt 19 in Dunedin, a regular schedule activity for our club. We provided $8,500 for research to resolve and solve and cure this Alzheimer disease. We raised $455.03 for Dunedin Cares for Thanksgiving turkeys, and our club volunteered and supported Dunedin's Wine the Blues, supporting the DDMA. The next half of the month, our club activities include volunteering our services in support of the Celtic Music Festival, as well as ringing the bell with the Salvation Army here in Dunedin. Our constant theme, doing good, having fun. Our main theme, serve to change lives. Allow me to close with Rotary's five-way test, a guiding light for members and the club, as we do at the end of each meeting each week. The five-way test of the things we think, say, and do. Is it the truth? Is it fair? to our concern? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Is it fun? On behalf of our Rotary Club and Rotary Clubs, thank you for this proclamation. We're gonna take a picture of you guys for our social media. Very good, guys. You. You're welcome. Congratulations. Okay. So now we have another really cool uh, proclamation. Um, it's something that we try to celebrate every year, especially with our downtown um, business community. So I will turn this over to Commissioner Franey. Okay. Well, I think we have Jack from the downtown merchants here. Is he? I think Maybe. he's over at the B and I thing next door. Um, okay. All right. Well, he's here in he's here in spirit. Okay. okay. And then Pam, you want to come up from the Dunning Chamber? So yeah, this is really important because it's all about buying local, right? Right. So uh, we know our business has been through a lot, and uh, we want to give them as much love and business as we can. So Small Business Saturday, whereas the government of Dunedin, Florida, celebrates our local small businesses and the contributions they make to our local economy and community. 
And whereas according to the United States Small Business Administration, there are 31.7 million small businesses in the United States. They represent 99.7% of firms with paid employees, and they are responsible for 65.1% of net new jobs created from 2000 to 2019. And whereas small businesses employ 47.1% of the employees in the private sector in the United States, 88% of the U.S. consumers feel a personal commitment to support small businesses in the wake of the pandemic, and 92% of small business owners have pivoted the way they do business to stay open during the pandemic, and we know that for sure. Mm -hmm. Lots of creative things there. Whereas 97% of small business Saturday shoppers recognize the impact they can make by shopping small, and 85% of them also encourage friends and family to do so. And whereas 56% of shoppers reported they shopped online with a small business on Small Business Saturday in 2020, and more than 50% of the consumers who reported shopping small endorsed a local business on social media or shopped at a local business because of a social media recommendation. And whereas Dunedin supports our local businesses that create jobs, boost our, our local economy, uh, preserve our communities, make us better, I'll add that, whereas advocacy groups as well as public and private organizations across the country have endorsed the Saturday after Thanksgiving as Small Business Saturday. Now, therefore, I'm Maureen Mofraney by virtue of the authority vested by the mayor of the city of Dunedin, Florida, and on behalf of the entire city commission, do hereby proclaim November 27, 2021, as Small Business Saturday and urge the residents of our community and communities across the country to support small businesses and merchants on Small Business Saturday and throughout the year. You gonna see Jack or shall I hold Jack? Uh, I'll make sure that it gets in. Okay, sounds great. Thank you wanna you. say a few yes. words? I'll say. I just wanna say that this is really important, um, especially this year, even just driving here, I heard about how they're expecting this holiday season to be record breaking. And I think it's important in this age of amazon.com that we remember our, our roots here. Um, I know that from the Chamber's perspective, well, I mean, in reality, our businesses in Dunedin are hugely small businesses. Here comes and Jack. here comes Jack. <laughs> Keep going, though. You're good. Is there a difference in these? No, there is not. Okay. Boom. Hi. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> so, I, you're very good. So I, I think that, um, you know, we're trying to encourage, I know the chamber, I think also the DDMA, we're trying to encourage everybody to get on board, come downtown, shop small, shop local. Don't, actually, don't just shop downtown, shop all over Dunedin. Um, I personally like to shop for uh, like locally and also I, I've gone online and bought like gift cards and things like that, um, which I think that that's one of the huge ways our businesses pivoted during the pandemic. And as I've told, I think probably each and every one of you at one point or another, um, I think that our businesses in Dunedin did a fantastic job handling the pandemic and, and pivoting. And I think we owe them uh, a debt of gratitude for um, keeping everything pretty much status quo where, you know, here we are, the holidays, and we're ready to roll. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. Okay. Jack? Uh, sure. I'll always say something. <laughs> of course. Um, sorry about that. I have a networking meeting prior to this, so I can, I'm always like a 915, 920 to get to these. Uh, so I apologize. Um, but I don't know what she said, but what I will say is that the, the uh, Ditto. yeah, I, I think that um, between the chamber and, and the city and, and the DDMA, I think we did a great job during, uh, during the pandemic. And, and I think the businesses continue to, to, to push us to be better for them, if that makes sense. Um, and I think we're trying to do the best we can to, to be able to, to uh, for, for everybody to work together and, and be able to push and, and be able to drive traffic. So uh, the small businesses are, are the lifeline um, of the city, I believe. And I'm very pro small business. And I think, uh, I think all of you should really look at that as well. So thank you for this. Don't go anywhere and don't clap yet. I, I was just going to say, I, I think we'll, um, I know Sue can probably hear me wherever she is, but we, we definitely... Can. There you are. I, we definitely want to promote Small Business Saturday. Gotcha. 
um, and really urge people. Um, I want to thank both of you for the work you've been doing with our retail group and, and really trying to help them um, do better, uh, whatever that means. Um, so thank you for that. And, and while you're standing here, I also want to thank you, Jack, and the DDMA and all the people involved uh, for a fantastic Wines the Blues this last Saturday night. It was really incredible to see all those faces together again. Um, I know it was a lot of hard work, but really appreciate your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. I want to add one other thing to that. Uh, the, the festivals, um, you know, has always been a challenge with, with the vendors uh, setting up in front of uh, the, the businesses, right, the retail establishments. Um, uh, to be honest with you, it wasn't done completely on purpose, but it, it, uh, we had a challenge getting vendors this year. Uh, but with the number of vendors that we had, the setup, we changed the setup and didn't put the vendors in front of their locations. And it actually worked out very well. Uh, the businesses, we got extremely positive feedback from the retailers that were on Main Street as well as the restaurants and things and the other businesses of how many people were in and out of their doors, which was different uh, than, than some of the other festivals because obviously the, they, they blocked the, their, their storefronts. So like I said, it wasn't our, it, you know, normally we try to do the best we can because of the financial expense of the, of the festival. However, it worked out great. Um, it was nice to see everybody. I did stand on the corner and watch people go in and out of the, out of the storefronts. Um, and uh, it, it, I just wanted to throw that out there because it, it, it worked out great. And, and if we can figure out how to make it work for future events, um, I think it would be very positive um, to be able to get it to work out that way. And uh, Jory from Parks and Rec and I kind of looked at the, the streetscape and and found locations on where we wouldn't be blocking off some of them. And we're going to try to do a vendor count this week on how many vendors we can actually fit without being in front of storefronts. So, and I know uh, a lot of a lot of positive that happened because of that. So, Very just good. want to throw that out there. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, now is the time for citizen input. Anybody wishing to come forward and speak to us on any item that's not already on the agenda? If it's on the agenda, you'll get an appropriate time to speak to it at, um, when we start talking about it. Anybody? Okay. Uh, we've got the consent agenda, which is the approval of the minutes for the October work session and regular commission meeting. Board and committee appointments for a committee on aging, disability advisory committee, Dunedin Housing Authority Library Advisory Committee. We have a lien reduction request for the property located at 1775 Briar Circle in the amount of almost $62,000. Um, are there any items to be pulled? Wait a minute, what? I didn't see the 61. What's the Briar Circle? I didn't see it under mine either. I got postponed. Yeah, I got postponed, yeah. Right. I got postponed. It's postponed. not on consent, it was postponed yeah, it's the 30th, yeah. Okay, sorry, I'll remove that piece. Um, so for the minutes, the board and the committee appointments, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Oh. Vice Mayor Gow and Commissioner Franey. <clears throat> all right, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, and so do we have to do a motion to postpone that lien or is it? No, it was on consent. So consent okay, moves on gotcha. and off. Yeah. <laughs> Demi Moore over here. <laughs> All right. A little human error on my part. Apologies. All right. So we'll go to the action items. Our first item is the Public Safety Committee continuance. Um, I'm going to look to Jennifer because I know there's some ongoing discussion. There is, Mayor, and, and staff's going to request that, that you table this continuance until probably, you know, late winter. And the reason for that is that as you know, uh, when we were uh, going through the, the budget process, Commissioner Franey had asked that we organize a forum with the uh, Pinellas County Sheriff's Office uh, to discuss the current contract and, and essentially you know, how our relationship with the Sheriff's Office is going um, and those types of, of things. I think that it would probably be better to discuss the continuance of the Public Safety Advisory Committee after we hold uh, that forum in case it should affect the, the enabling or, uh, resolution or, or anything like that. Okay. So that we're not just changing twice, is that what you're Correct. saying, if we change something? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy, did you want to weigh in? 
Hi, for those of you that are watching and don't know, my name is Jeremy Reynolds. I'm the chair of the Public Safety Committee. Um, I would concur completely and wholeheartedly with changing the enabling resolution. When you look at EPIC goal number five in the staffing, compare it against what the committee is supposed to do and not supposed to do, they don't align. <laughs> And just from an operational standpoint, I don't believe that this particular committee and the way it functions currently is capable of helping us achieve our EPIC goals. Okay. And I know you guys have had some quorum issues, right, um, since April? Yeah. Well, yeah. Just being able to get bodies with a pulse, yes. Yeah. So, okay. So this will help review all of that and, and not do things twice. You're okay with that? You feel the committee will be, well, you can't even get the committee to meet, so... Yeah. From your perspective as the chair. Uh, yeah. I, 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 on Jennifer's recommendation, I, you know, I don't see that the, the committee would be able to meet until then anyway. And um, I did want to bring up the, the keep in mind next month is December. Yes. <laughs> and, and so when you look at, at your annual review of 1606, yeah. I would highly encourage a standardization across the board for operations of all boards and committees and, and make and model it after the way the commission operates. Yeah. And that's, that that's way, what we're looking to do. Yeah. Yeah. Concur whole, wholeheartedly with that. And, and I know that Rebecca and Jennifer and Nikki have been kind of looking at all of that. And they'll, they'll have some recommendations for us Good. whenever we have our workshop or whatever. Good. Okay. Yeah. That sounds great. great. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks for being here. Any questions from anybody? Nope. Okay. Can I get a motion to table? So moved. Second. Okay, Vice Mayor and Commissioner Franey. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. All right, and then we have the uh, uh, Mies Hospital parking lease that, that has been requested to be uh, postponed to our December 16th work session. Um, anything you want to add to that? Nothing, Mayor. Okay, can I have a motion? So moved. Second. Commissioner Kynes and Commissioner Franey, thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, now we have the temporary valet parking license agreement. Robert, where are you? There's a little bit of a delay in the on the. Gotcha. So while, while there is a delay, uh -huh. <clears throat> Mayor, if I may. Sure. I just want to acknowledge that I am a member of First Presbyterian Church, and I sit on their board. And I just want to acknowledge that I have had no conversations in respect to this. And so just want to put that out there in public and ask Nikki, is it okay that I still vote on this issue? Well, I, I have to say the same thing. But I'm not on bo any boards, but... There's no conflict with any of you voting. This is actually a lease also with the Knights Valet, the valet contractor to be on the city's property, but I understand they're using some spaces at the church, but still it does not um, inure to your private gain in any way. You're not employed by the church. You've not been hired by the church to influence this decision. So there's no, there's no conflict of interest with, with you voting for being a member or for serving on their nonprofit board. Okay, uh, is uh, Zach supposed to be here? Yeah, Zach and Knight Valet. Yep. I, I, my name's Matt. I'm the owner of Knight Valet. I'm, okay. I'm okay. This, okay. I don't know where Zach is. He's at that hookah. Yeah, I just would assume he would be here. Oh, well, we did call him, so we, we do so. expect him. Yeah. And okay. Of course. He told me he was going to be here as well. So. Yeah, okay. That's what we heard. Like. All right. Go right ahead. Uh, uh, certainly. Uh, good morning, Mayor, Commissioners. Bob Byron Smith, Economic Development Director. Uh, here today to present to you a. Uh, Merchant initiated item, which is valet parking at the living room to address loss of parking with the construction of City Hall and the Wood Street parking lot. Again, this is uh, initiated by the merchant. Uh, they're going with a, uh, a contract with a valet service called Night Valet. Uh, Matt is here to represent that and answer any questions that you might have. This agreement would be between the city and ZJF Brands, which is the living room, and then they have their agreement with uh, Knight Valet and also with the First Presbyterian Church. The way this would work is they would go ahead and have a valet behind the living room, which is on the city parking lot there for staging, and then they would take cars to the uh, First Presbyterian Church for storage. We see this as staff as a temporary measure. This is a November to April 30th uh, to take into consideration the construction of the parking lot 
to allow for better uh, parking op options and also circulation. Again, I just want to emphasize this is not done for any uh, economic reason with the, with the merchant. It is uh, purely a measure to help increase parking supply during uh, you know, our peak time and a time that we're also having construction of the major uh, Wood Street parking lot. So I'm here to answer any questions that you might have. And of course, we have Matt here from, from Night Valet. We would look for the cars again behind the living room. Then they would circulate around the parking lot and then go out on Highland down to First Presbyterian Church where they would be stored. So I believe, and Matt can answer this, I think they got maybe 40 parking spots or so that they're looking to utilize for storage. So we see that as a big plus to help the parking uh, supply downtown. Okay. Uh, questions? I, I, I do. Mm -hmm. I thought this was, um, you know, I just want to make sure that, and I did ask you these questions too. Okay, you have the licensor, which is the city, correct? You have the licensee, which I think is the... Uh, the it's both collectively defined, the valet contractor together with the property owner, ZJF. Okay, so it is the valet and the living room or whatever their yeah. LLC is or whatever. That's So that's how yeah. it's actually defined. ZF the, Brands yeah, to they, LLC. Yeah. Not yeah. to talk in front of City Attorney Nikki, but they, they're indemnifying us, too. They're taking on all the insurance and, and risk aspects. Right, and so. I, I did see that. I'm okay. just trying to get my licensee and licensor correct. So the licensee is the valet service. There's two, um, one that actually parks the car and one that's all – that has the oversight of everything. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then the living room, whoever they – their legal entity is. ZJF. And then the first press is the surface parking lease. And they are paid uh, $1 per car for 40 spaces, and that's all determined the cost by the software, the valet software. And I think that sort of is in a nutshell, and this will go through April 2022, yeah. correct? April 30th, yes. April 30th, 2022. Yes. Okay. I think those are my questions. Okay. Other questions? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, okay. I'm sorry. There you go. Uh, the, the, the staging area is the parking lot behind the living room. Yes. And that is public parking, city-owned. That is. We just stage in the little alleyway and quickly get out of there, or they could a couple parking spots, yes. Right. So that is just a staging area, that, that those spaces are still available to the public? Well, no, we, we would look to earmark a couple of them that they would have on a permit-type basis for the cars. I don't think we could. We'd have to have a situation where they have to have some designated-type parking to store cars to, to take them away and go to the First Presbyterian Church. So I think they're still looking at their mechanics, whether they're just going to stage quickly in the alleyway, or the parking lot in the alleyway right there, or are they going to have to take up a couple spaces? And that's why we put on that exhibit kind of a couple spaces that would be kind of cordoned off for them. Okay. So, but those spaces won't be used as part of the valet service. They would be used as part of the valet service, and if, if – Two or three are taken out of play. We feel we're gaining because there's the opportunity for 40 or so with the, the First Presbyterian Church. So that means in our minds, other parking spots would be available. And with customers utilizing the service, are they paying for that valet, valet service? Who is paying the valet service? Is it the customer or is it the living room? Living room. No, the way, the way, this, one, the way this one works is the, the, the customer is paying the valet service. Um, the living room, ZJF Brands, if someone spends $50 in, in the restaurant, they will pick up that valet service. So, but the customer is paying the $6 for the, for the service, but can get a credit if they spend more than 50 in the restaurant. Okay. Does that, did, did I answer that? Well, I, I'm just concerned that as part of this process, we're taking public parking away. We, there are, there are a, a couple parking spots that would be designated for the valet, but again, we feel we're increasing parking supply by having that, the whole parking area might be filled if we didn't have the other option to store at the church. So you're just talking about a few spaces or the entire yeah. lot? No, no. A few uh, spaces. See, that, that, okay, that's what I was, was getting. Okay, so you just... Operational. Right, there, it's for the operational purpose, but as a resident of Dunedin, that lot is still, for the most part, accessible to me. 
Yes. Yes. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. I think that's kind of where I'm Yeah. Going. Okay. Thank you. Commissioner? Yeah, <clears throat> kind of along the same lines a little bit. Um, so I've heard two theories about how the, the, the cars will come in and out of the lot. Mm -hmm. You know, one is off of wood, and then they'd kind of, you know, basically go around the whole um, dry portion of the parking lot, or they'd come off of uh, Highland and, you know, basically kind of would be half the distance of the parking lot. Um, I guess... I mean, I, do you know which is going to be, or are they still figuring that out? Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm going to ask Matt to come up to the podium. Matt, if you will. It, my understanding, and Matt, you, you can correct me. I think the cars will circulate in the parking lot and then go out on Highland to go down the church, because obviously Wood Street is one way. So they cannot go out of that access drive and make a left on Wood because it's one way. But Matt, you, you're, you're, you're show Yeah, that. he is correct. And then to answer your okay. previous question. Um, hang on one, yeah. a, one second. Um, Bob, is yes. there a way for you to put the map up? Because I think it's, yeah. I think there'll be a couple of questions on it. Let's see if I can. So let, let's see if we can. Um, uh, let's see what we got here. Does this? Morning, Zach. Does this operate? Do you know? I'm hoping this operates. Justin? Oh, poor it is, it's operating. Okay. Yeah, but can it needs to be blown up, yeah. yeah so. Zoom. Do you do one on that one? This here is uh, mm. Yeah, I know this isn't as large. Let me just get you oriented, if I may, until he tries to zoom in. The, the living room building is right here where my pen is. Right. This is Highland. This is Maine. The parking lot behind uh, the living room and the other uh, building, Casco Viejo, is this. This is the actual parking So can lot. you show us what you expect uh, for the entry? Yeah. And then the exit. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And, and Matt, you can step in here at some point in time. Uh, cars will come in off of Highland mm -hmm. and behind the living room. They'll either stay here in the alleyway quickly and they, or they'll take the cars into a designated parking spot here and then they will circulate out and then go back out of Highland and go down to the First Presbyterian Church. That's uh, my understanding, Matt. Yes, that, that, that is correct. And, and I don't intend to utilize uh, where it says valley drop off area. As far as staging goes behind um, the living room, I can't expect it to be a car sitting there for more no. than one minute before yeah. we before we take it away or, or bring it back. So in, in, in reality, even though we, we have called for this could be designated, I, I think what Matt is saying, which I, I understand too, is that it's going to be very temporary in this alleyway. The car's going to be in there quick and then quickly moved. Just about the time it takes for people to get out of their vehicle and hand them a valet ticket, they'll be on their way and the car will be gone. So we don't think we have a major impact on the, on the public parking. We actually think we're increasing it. I agree, but yeah. I mean, because anybody can do this, right? Doesn't I mean, if you go to the living room and, <clears throat> and, you, and you do $50 or more, you'll get it stamped. But technically, if I go somewhere else, I can go there, do this too. Of course, yes. <clears throat> yeah, well. So, but my, my biggest concern would be <laughs> that depending on how busy you get, mm -hmm. that people have the illusion or the reality that the cars are going to flow through that parking lot and people are going to think, oh, well, that's not really open parking at all. That's a valet service and, I, you know, that's kind of off limits. Um, how do you address that? That's why I text to te texted you. Yeah, this obviously is Where Zach. are you? Obviously, Zach, the owner of CJFK, <laughs> living room and other restaurants. So yeah. I don't know if you need to swear him in or anything. No. It's, no, it's not a... Um, no. Just swam in anyway. <laughs> you know he's going to tell us the truth. You're sworn in. There you go. No, you're yeah, so, so currently we have, um, and in that back lot... I didn't realize that Mike... There you go. The back lot that we have there, um, just, you know, we know it pretty well because it's in our backyard, but it's filled up by the staff of the living room, smokehouse, Flanagan's. That doesn't, like, turn very frequently. So especially since the lot's been blocked off... <clears throat> That lot, if you go there, it's just packed all day long. And, you know, two row will be closed, but I don't think we're on any issues with, like, circulation. Yeah, you know, if I may, he just uh, brought some up I was thinking about. I'll, I'll let uh, uh, Matt and Zach talk. This is only on a Friday night, Thursday, Friday, Saturday Friday. night, mm -hmm, uh, during a special event and, and a Sunday type yeah. deal. So yeah. this is somewhat of a limited time frame, too. This is not an all-day, all-week type thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and every restaurant, so I've approached every restaurant on the West End, or East End, excuse me. Um, no one has chose to become part of the validation program, but there everyone's more than welcome. So I've sat down with Lizzie and you know, everyone pretty much. So 
Um, but this is big. I mean, it's going to be exciting to see how this works. And that's the first time the Indians ever had public ballet before here. Mm -hmm. It's a great experiment. I mean, yeah. in that way, it you're absolutely right, Zach. It's a great experiment. Mayor, may I add something? Yes, please. <clears throat> I think that it, this is actually a pretty big day. Just because, um, and Zach and I met after in the Wood Street lot shut down, uh, you know, portion of it, to try to figure out a solution um, <clears throat> to that parking issue and that parking supply issue. Our parking problem is at the peak hour on the weekends. And this type of a pilot program directly addresses that. And it's the type of innovation uh, that we need to undertake in order to address our parking problem. This costs the taxpayer nothing. And I think that that's very important. And it adds supply. First Presbyterian Church at a dollar a spot is not making a whole bunch of money. But they are supporting downtown oh, nice and supporting um, you know, our commercial enterprises. And um, it's, a, it's a pilot program. I anticipate it's going to work very well. I think a lot of people will valet when they're driving around. Um, so, so, you know, I just think it's a really big day, and I thank Zach uh, and Matt for bringing this this forward, and Bob as well worked to, yeah. together with everybody. I uh, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Just real quickly, too, this is the big parking lot, obviously, that's right. going to be under construction. They're going to start, it, it appears, uh, April 4th. There's yes. a portion of this that's, that's currently open, but all of that will go away shortly, so that's why something like this is, is a real key. That's so what I'm in, sure, though. And a little bit of uh, why we chose thank to you. do this, so... Um, I have a background in macroeconomics for large companies, so I'm good at analyzing things. When we, when you guys closed this lot down, um, we saw a 26% reduction in year over year uh, spend, and then we tracked cars and all sorts of stuff. And uh, like on the average Saturday, over 300 cars will pull into that parking lot and pull out of it. So there's a big, a big need for this. So we're very excited. And I told uh, Jennifer in the city of Miami, that's where I worked previously, uh, they have valet, and it's a massive you know, a massive revenue generator for the city at no cost to the taxpayer. So hopefully it works out good. Yeah. Okay, Thanks. don't go anywhere. Yeah, <laughs> okay. If I, if I can just add a question to your, to yeah, your question um, on the parking lot. Um, mm -hmm. Having those two spots, I think, to the uh, south, yeah. I think doing your, va yeah, yeah, right there. Right. Having it there versus in the alleyway, I think gives you the opportunity for more stacking at some of the busy mm -hmm. times. Um, so I, I just, I actually suggest going down that way myself because it just gives you more stacking ability. What we don't want is stacking out on Highland. Yes, and that, and and really and, and, and I think there will be moments, not a lot, but mm -hmm. moments when that happens. So by having it with the appropriate signage guiding people there. It doesn't hurt you in any way. You can still go back around and out. And if it is stacking, going out of there can be cumbersome as well, yeah, it, depending on how somebody has moved in. Yeah. You know how they've turned in. So. A queuing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So I, I would think it would be better just to start off down there, versus moving it down there later if there's a problem. Yeah. That's just my humble opinion. Questions from. The group? Yes. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, most of mine are for clarification, not just for me. Okay. Um, but so, uh, Bob, I, I had asked some questions in, in the agenda review. Um, as far as I understood, I thought there were three spaces that were being reserved. Is that not correct? Yes, it is correct. There, on the map, so, there's three. It's just the cars are... Yes, Commissioner, it is three. So we should, we should say three instead of two or it is, none. It is, it is uh, three. But they're, they're, the plan is to use three. Now, just so you know this, everyone, you guys... <laughs> I'm very supportive of this, and as far as I'm concerned, this is being presented to us for two reasons. Number one, it's what we've been asking for for some period of time, or, or looking at some innovative way of, of, of doing this, and perhaps in the future of doing a lot of this, and perhaps lots even further away. But then second of all, obviously this affected a public lot. So we were taking up a space in there, and there was a potential for some misunderstanding. Second of all, um, I talked about the ingress and egress. Uh, of this. And so I was concerned uh, in my initial conversation with people coming out onto Wood Street and, and making, a, making a mistake, Bob, of, of, of heading north. Uh, I'm sorry, of heading, of heading east. Yes, sir. Um, and, and I just want to make sure that we identify for them. And some of them may be tired from a long evening and just want to make sure that they understand they've, they're to go right. Um, second, third of all, um, as far as the number of people that 
that you that you plan, sir, to have to have there. Um, that's not been defined definitely at this point in time, and it'll depend on what you experience there. Of course. But if it's very, very busy, I assume that you would then put additional, additional people or could staff. have additional so, people down there. So I just want to say this. We, you know, I'm a, uh, I guess I'm a researcher, and we found that because he's the best in the area. So, mm -hmm. And he's a local guy. So I'm just, I just, use, you know, I, like, I could call the ABN. Yeah, I just want this clear. So he clarified it. And so, yeah, he owns the company. Yeah, yeah so, the, so the people hear that. And yeah. he has um, some really good places that he currently does valet, like, you know, Wind and Montclair Beach and all sorts of places. So he was, uh, like, he was chosen for a reason. If you want to continue with that line, because I was going to ask that question, because we know that, but just so that people know that, you have experience at this. And so go yes. ahead, Wind in the Mirror, and et cetera, et cetera. Please. Yeah, no. Uh, so Knights nice Valley has uh, a combined experience of just about 20 years. Uh, some, obviously, the pandemic has changed things up in the Valley world a little bit, but uh, some of our bigger clients are the Wyndham Grand on Clearwater Beach, uh, Monte Carlo Towers down in Tampa, Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant Group. Um, who else we got? And then, the, obviously, there's a couple event venues down in Tampa that we handle as well uh, now as well. So when we when you send uh, someone down to the church to get the car, mm -hmm. how are they going to get down to the church to get the car? They run. They run. And so the same thing is when they come back. Mm -hmm. Either way, when they don't have a vehicle, they're yep. they're running. There's a really cool sweet time in the middle where people are able to take a car to go get another car. Exactly. But other no. than that, they're running. I understand it's that. About, yeah. so, it's about a minute and forty second run. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be my holiday. That should so be my Zach holiday. Is, Zach's going to be working for two hours a week down there, and not not going to the gym anymore. Um, so is it, it, it's going to be stated out there that this there must be a sign that's, that's going to be stating what this is going to cost. Can that sign include that this is for all visitors in Dunedin? Yeah, so right now the signage is discriminatory against any person or business at all, and it is a chalkboard style yeah. sign per the requirements. So it can it can change just with a little water and eraser. Yeah, to be the same with board, uh, to meet our code. Exactly. Right. So, but my point is that this is announced at all times that this is for everyone and yes. anyone. What happens when you fill up at forty? So uh, really, it's forty. How we have it is 40 spots. As you know, the parking lot is split into mark spots and then a basketball <coughs> court area. That's the dividing line. Uh, those 40 spots were designated because on the other side, there's 40 spots. We can fit about 60 cars there. And there's a, uh, a gra not a grass street, but gravel street that I was told I can park vehicles there as well. Being able to park about 50, 60 cars there over the course of an evening because people are coming in, coming out. We're expecting to be able to park anywhere from 250 cars in a night. Thank you. So you feel like with that overload, then that that's sufficient. Yeah. That that's sufficient space. There's but a learning curve here a little bit. I'm sorry. Right. It's no. Going to evolve and adapt. You know, and that's why they're very skilled with it. Yeah. Sorry, Commissioner. Yeah. So would you would you please make sure that there is that sign up there or something up there? I personally make sure yeah. that that people yeah. so they don't. We don't want anybody going left there by by accident. I don't assume that these guys would be going left because they know, they they don't want to violate any of our laws yeah. or anything, I, I but. Appreciate. They can make two sandwich wood signs, one, you know, that, that, that yeah. they're closer to wood street, so that doesn't occur. So. And we can always build that into our uh, vernacular, too, when, we're, when guests are departing. Okay. And then just, these are questions, so I'm asking questions, sort of, but um, so in, in the dialogue that's been given to us, Zach is paying money for this. Yes, he is. Okay, so it's not just the person coming up to park the car. Me, if I drive in there, I'm going to pay $6.00. But Zach is already committed to this company a good sum of money per month yes. to provide the service. Yeah, that's and so when his offer to make sure that this is for everyone is, is excellent. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. That's why, you know, it's, again, just to repeat, private initiated uh, coming to City Hall, Jennifer and his staff. Uh, so it's, he's paying Nice LA, Nice LA is paying the church, and of course they're identifying all the insurance aspects to the city. Um, we're going to see how this works. It's, it's going to be very interesting to us to watch and get the data. The other thing that's in that agreement, um, you know, that, that we had Nikki in, input in there is that we they share the data with us. We'll, we'll see. Is it Friday night that's the busiest, or is it Saturday? Or is it, so we're going to get that data. It's actually going to be pretty helpful to us. Yeah. So, in summary, then, 
is it is the three spot. You are going to take those three spots. We've, yeah, read, yeah. we've gone back and forth here, so I just want to understand that. That may become less than three. Well, just, just, yeah. but the only thing I'm going to say is I want you guys to make sure you've got enough queuing area, stocking area, in case you've got a busy moment. That's it. So I, I would rather have you work out the operations. Yeah, yeah. And I, I don't want to tell you your business model. It's just, I'm telling you, we, we are not downtown Tampa. We're downtown Dunedin. And, and as soon as that thing queues and, and backs up into the street and somebody has to sit and wait to get across the street to get down there, we're all going to hear about it on social media. Which then reflects poorly on us, reflects poorly on you guys. And so I'd rather have you be more careful than less. Of course. And, and then you can see if you decide it's not necessary. I'd rather have you correct in the, you know, move back. I'd rather you be safe than sorry. Because you want it to be it's successful. It's almost a staff line. I mean, I'm back yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I get you. If I may, I just want to ask you this day, just a quick question, uh, Nikki. Um, obviously, this is part of the exhibit, the agreement. You know, we're hearing, obviously, the queuing is an important part. If, if the three spots are moved up a little bit more to the north, can we do that on the fly today? We have three that are marked as part of the exhibit here. There's been a little bit of talk about maybe having, actually, I thought there was deliveries or something up here. If I, had um, if I may, yeah. Mayor and Commission, if you would allow us to work on that map and make yeah. sure that we address these issues, was, and we don't have to discuss this yeah, yep. as a commission. Yeah. Right. Yep. Mm. Oh. But but we do need to. We, well, I guess what we do need though is if that is moving, that, right. if that's moving, then the commission should include in its motion approving the agreement with the amendment to you know adjust the spaces as needed. Well, right. as needed. Does that give you enough direction to make as that needed. okay? I just. That queuing as is really needed is a, is a bit is a bit aggressive. Uh, as, uh, yeah, as needed yeah. could be, could end up becoming big. You, what you're big establishing here is the floor of rights. As needed but with the city manager, not as needed that they do it. Well, if we just say as needed, that leads so that gives me more to. Uh, yeah, I think it has to be city manager what adjusted. With city manager permission. Okay. Yeah. I think How about that? Authorization. Authorization. Yeah. yeah. Hang on, Bob. I think there's some signage out here on these sides with some restrictions. That's why we moved it down a little Well, there bit. are because some of those spots belong to the condo yeah, next the door. Yeah, the condo's over here. Yeah, um, so, I mean, that, that was part of the reason we purchased that, and then they, they have a certain number of spots oh, yeah, that are closer to their building, yeah. which I always try to remind people we have to remember that. Necessary. Yes. Okay, yeah. we'll, we'll... I got that. Okay, we'll, we'll take care of it. develop two phases at a certain amount of cars or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I just want to know if Nikki's comfortable where we're getting with the. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good because I get. I understand now. It's 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 truly saying during the term of this temporary agreement, if the city needs to adjust this box, it can do so upon approval or authorization from the city manager. Yes. Yeah. I can make that change, but just to you all, logistically, after today, you're going to need to re. We're going to need to re-sign the agreement because I'm going to need to make those changes and then we'll execute it. Good, my right. Did I make that motion? Uh, not yet, because I, I haven't even got a chance oh, to okay. I have a, well, another I was question. Gonna, I was going to amend the motion, and I didn't there, make. I, No, we don't have a motion. <laughs> There's no <laughs> There's no motion yet. But you've just got good instruction for it, hopefully, or when you go motion. to make it. So, uh, Mayor, just to assure the members of the commission, if this were to change significantly, then I would certainly bring it back to the city commission. Yeah. Yeah. Or let us know. Right. And my uh, last comment is, if, if you end up with a stacked up group, because where they're going to be coming in is close to the down, quite close to the downtown, um, or, or the other way. If they start stacking up, please please shout and yes. let oh, no, us right. work that out. Help you work that out. For the most part, there's some people I haven't spoken with. I'm a pretty vocal person. So, so we're speaking for all the all the sure. folks that come into Denny, <laughs> whether they're going to use your spot. I, I got text to prove <laughs> yeah. that one. Yeah, I'm pretty vocal. Cool. Same with Bob. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm in the Talk Bob to Bob. <laughs> so I had a question, and that was in regards to in the stopping I talked about, and and it was mentioned here and, that this valley would be. I don't know, I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, yeah, Sunday. Special events, yeah. And special events. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about special events. What do you, ha all special events? It, it could be, but of course it's going to be somewhat restricted with road closures. Well, that's, that's why I'm bringing it up. I don't know how 
much value. Well, I mean, I do know we have the two-way traffic going down. Can I propose something, possibly? For whatever that road is. What if for special Thursday. events, what if for special events, um, maybe talking to Matt about doing like the downstairs of the artist center, a much larger parking lot? Because valet, you can fit like three times the amount of cars than a normal parking lot. But maybe using him other places in Dunedin, possibly. Yeah, we and do some paid parkments on those special events with Vince Kizzy, so I know. Yeah. yeah, and with so yeah, but that's not uh, with the merchants too. That's um, you know, or any other. Yes, it's nice to, to do that, but I it's ensuring our supply yeah. is probably our top priority versus raising money for local five hundred one c threes. Not that they are not important. No. I don't mean to say that in any way, shape, or form. Actually, a better option might be the. But, and we can work on that yeah. later. We're, what I just really wanted to understand was what do you mean by this would be going on during special events? Because I do know that you are also working, Jennifer, mm -hmm. on parking plans for us, which the church is involved during special events and maybe having the trolley and that type of thing. So I just want to make sure we're not conflicting. Right. It's yeah. a remote parking like that the city manager did uh, with uh, Chiba. Yes. Line. You know, when we talk to customers, you know, I've, talked to, I've talked to a ton of people about doing this, because obviously it's going to cost us some money. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think the main benefit is when we talk to people about the pay parking, which I was here during all that, and I supported it. Um, and then when we got rid of it, I said, so how do you feel about valet parking? They said, well, I'm paying for convenience now, so it's different. So I think there's a different mentality than you guys are used to for that. So mm -hmm. I think if you put a well-placed valet stand on an event and, you know, Provided by Danita, I think it'll be a pretty good thing. Let's nice make this one successful and see where we're yeah, at. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, let's see how it works. Yeah, I, I still don't understand the what's going to happen during special. So, so there's going to be a um, – let me just give an example. We're going to have the art thing next weekend down here. Um, so if people were valeting, those aren't necessarily the people that are coming to your restaurant. Okay, but you're saying you would still continue to operate that, and yeah. okay, and they would be then going down okay, I'm, I'm, the two-way direction of whatever that is, Virginia. Or Christine whatever. and I are doing this, you know, not just for the living room. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to have to then, obviously, during special events, we need different departments' eyes and ears on what's happening to. And I don't remember, is that Virginia that goes all the way to Hood? Virginia. Okay. Highland. Well, to Highland. Not, oh, yeah. Virginia, yeah, Highland. yeah, okay. Because I, I, sometimes these roads change. But we're going to have to ha see that, monitor it, because now it's two-way, which is new right. for people. And, you know, we're going to have folks that maybe live there that uh, don't on. like all that traffic going down there. But it, it is a special event. It's only two-way to route. Right. Yeah, one way. There are stops at the route. Yeah. It's just a construction. Well, then they don't have a way to get to it. No, I understand this, but it's very limited. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Limited. I mean, I, I don't think valet parking is going to be just the answer for the special event yeah. aspect. I mean, I think that's where the remote parking is going to come in. So, no. the, so then how are people going to it's, get It's two-way east on Virginia to that lot. And then to come back, you'd have to go around to Wood so Street. Wood Street. So, yeah, yeah. Wood Street. Yeah. And that would generate... Um, Additional traffic in the area. That said, those events are going to generate additional traffic. Well, but in the it area. might stop them from parking on Wood Street, which is what they right. don't like. And you could actually, if you use that for valet, I mean, you could use. There's a big, you know, yeah. parking stalls. Yeah, well, it's nice so. you guys will have a better understanding of Matt when it's capable. Of right. Well. Yeah. Well, so I, I'm just saying, during special events, I think we need to think. I know you can't answer this question today, so I'm not mm -hmm. going to worry about it. But I, I am asking that you relook at that on how people are, special events and this location, and how people are going to access it and the effects on the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. And that's not necessarily for you guys. It's really for us because we're the ones that are going to have to address it. We're the ones that are going to hear about it. I'd like you all to put some more thought into how that, does that Virginia Lane need to be two ways all the way down? I don't know because to me that's the answer. That's the simple fix. But I don't know that, and I'm not trying to freak anybody out. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I just want you all to look at it. We don't just solve it right this second, because that's not the purpose of this valet. The purpose is not for the special events. It's for the everyday. And so but I'm just going to look to you, Jennifer, to 
put some more discussion with your peeps. Yeah, I understand what you're but, saying. But can I just tack on there that it would be a really good thing if this valet helped to get some of the traffic parking off wood. Yeah. Because it we was, hear about it all, all the, the time. time. I, I understand that you do, but it won't. Because Wood Street is public parking and it's near downtown. Yeah. I mean, it just, it just won't. I can't promise you that. I really can't. I'm sorry. But in theory, you would assume it would. Because it's, it's right there. I think people, that... People have to pay for the valet. Right. They do. Yeah, I, think it, if, yeah, I think it would reduce it to some degree. I'm not thinking it's going to solve it. But I do think it would reduce it to I some think degree. with the larger events, Mayor and Commissioner, that, yeah. you know, that, that yeah, that's going to fill pretty fast. There, it's going to be free. It's, it's going to be close. Right. right. They're right. going to park there. I think mm -hmm. once we get, like, the first month of days from that. And, well, we'll be, and I think it depends on what the event is. Arts and crafts. Arts yeah, I think people will valet. Mm -hmm. uh, Wines the blues, probably not. Just it's a different, could be a different cause. I think it all depends. But anyway, we don't have to again. We don't have to figure all that out. No. I just want to very much acknowledge that the special events. Well, you know, we want to make sure how yeah. that the avenue that people are getting to you at, is safe mm -hmm. co and convenient and the least disruptive, mm -hmm. if possible. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, I'm going to open it up to the public in case anybody wants to speak, so you guys can go ahead and sit down. Okay. Anybody wish to come forward and speak to this item? Okay, seeing hearing none, can I have a motion to approve with the caveat that uh, uh, the city manager will, will work on uh, the stacking and where the stacking is located? So much. Second. Commissioner Kynes and Commissioner Franey. May I make a comment? Sure. I think I thought it was going to be a little bit more broader than that, though, that that they would be working with them to see if changes need to be made. Um, I, I think it does my... That's Nikki. Does That's my motion Nikki need question. to change? I'm just trying uh, to be helpful. The I instruction that I understood was that the agreement will be amended to account for that staging area to be adjusted as may be authorized by the city manager as or needed. as needed by, by the, the city, city manager. manager. So if the city said, we can't do the staging area here, we need to do it here, it allows the city to be able to move that staging area box to meet the needs of the city parking lot. That's my, that was my understanding in terms of the flexibility with regard to the Do you accept area. that as the motion? I'm is most, that your... I most certainly Does do. that answer yes, your question, said, Commissioner? Okay. Yes. okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes, final, I've, I'm good with the motion. Okay. Final, any final comments? Commissioner Kynes, you're the maker. No, I think, um, you know, I've gone to some big cities, um, well, not too long ago I went to San Antonio, and you, there is no put, nowhere that you don't use a valet. Yeah. Nowhere. I mean, you can't find it. So I think it really is a wave of the future. I appreciate you trying to do this with your, what is it, macrobiotics or... Macro -economics. Macro economics degree. Whatever. <laughs> uh, macrobiotics, whatever. You know, um, so, and I think that I also really thank you because you're stepping out and doing this privately. And that would be a wonderful thing to see more of our uh, merchants look at other options, whether it's leasing, you know, spaces. Uh, taking, you know, going ahead and setting aside new places that open up, whatever. I mean, I really appreciate all those efforts. Oh, of course. And we're happy to be, you know, my wife and I are fortunate enough that we can do this. So, you know, it's exciting. Hopefully, it one day I won't have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, we're okay with it. Thank you. Commissioner Freddy. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to thank you too, Zach. I think this is a great, grand experiment. Um, appreciate you stepping out and, uh, and doing it. Um, you know, there's a couple of uh, business owners, I'll name Lucky Lobster too, that's mm -hmm. kind of controlling their own destiny and trying mm -hmm. to do some things with our mutual challenge, parking. Um, but this is a great, this is a great step. And um, I think it's probably going to be pretty successful. So I'm, I'm excited about it, but we'll see. We'll see, but uh, I'm totally in favor of it. And thank you for doing it. Of course. Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I agree with everybody else, Zach. Thank you for stepping out and doing this. And it's nice that this is, uh, one of the first times, I guess, since the, the, the paid parking issue that um, we're really starting to focus back on, on the parking 
Uh, between red lobster, between what you're doing, between what we're red doing. Red lobster. Yeah, you red better lobster. say lucky Happy, lobster. Lucky lobster. <laughs> lucky lobster. You better, yeah. You'll never wash lobster. your mouth out with soap. Oh my God! I'll, I'll be getting a text from Tom Murphy there. <laughs> yeah, I do apologize. Yeah, Tom Murphy for that. will not be happy with you. <laughs> oh, there the other company says thank you for the free advertising. Uh, and what what we're doing with the parking lot that we just purchased. So it's, you know, the be between private businesses and, and the city doing what we can to control our own destiny is 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 a wonderful thing. So thank you. And so. Oh, and, and Vice Mayor Baycare, too. I just want to throw Baycare working mm -hmm. on us. Oh, yeah, Baycare mm -hmm. has been amazing. Oh, that should make your hands been amazing. Thank you. Commissioner Tornga? Uh, thank you. Th uh, thank you, Zach, for, for stepping in and making a little program like this. And I uh, can't wait to see your new running shoes. <laughs> 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 yeah. uh, well, I thank you too. Um, I remember the first phone call I got from you. At yeah, you know you were you were upset, um, and I understood it. You know, um, especially you know coming off of the pandemic and everybody hurting, and and it's one more way of tightening tightening the rope around your neck. I, I totally totally get it. Um, so I, I do thank you and Christina for your creativity. Um, and I know that you're dealing with all of this now with two babies huh. instead of one. Um, Mark, is it? Matt. Matt, sorry, I knew it was M. Terrible with names and I should be so much better. Um, Matt, I just wanna to reiterate to you again, we are a very small town, so anything that happens, believe me when I tell you it will be on all the stupid little groups. Uh, in on Facebook, you, sh you should. Probably better be careful. You should. You should. Maybe you want to soften that. Yeah, maybe. maybe. <laughs> Sorry. Little, yeah. All the little groups. Well, anyway. You're going to hear a lot of great things. <laughs> <laughs> but I would all suggest that I would suggest that you group. join them, just to monitor it, because and you know whatever happens, exactly. you're going to hear it, and we're going to hear it, and uh, I'm excited. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, definitely make yourself part of the community. Um, and then, Jennifer, I want to thank you as well for um, kind of being the visionary to, to, to see the benefit of this. Because I know at first it maybe wasn't her, it was like, oh, what's that going to do? You know, so I want to thank you for that. Thank you. Mayor and Bob really worked hard on it, too. Yep, I know he did. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And he, uh, Matt's going to have his fastest runners for the ballet. <laughs> He's got the guys that are going to really run. So. <laughs> it's pretty impressive to watch. Yeah, sure. anyway. You need yeah. to time them on their first run versus that last run <laughs> yeah. at the end yeah. of the oh night. Yeah. Well, I time myself like four times on it, and then I can just use that. As a <laughs> oh, okay. USF track team. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to get a part-time job, Mayor, if I may. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Our new weight loss take program. Care of that. We're always hiring. <laughs> All right, so um, we have a motion and a second with clarifications. Um, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Gentlemen, thank you very much. You don't have to stick around at all if you don't want to. You're more than welcome to stay, but we'll go on to... I think they've had it all. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're going to... We have the pool next. Do we want to take a little yeah. break, break before we get? Because I know that's probably going to be a longer yeah. conversation for everybody. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll we'll take a a quick little break. Oh, you're welcome. Too funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, it, I didn't even think about it. I'm sorry. I was wasn't trying to be.
We are back uh, to our um, November 16th work session, and uh, we will begin with the Highlander Park Aquatic Complex Master Plan. Welcome, gentlemen. Vince. Good morning, Mayor, Vice Mayor, City Commissioners. Uh, before I introduce um, uh, Vince Gizzi, Parks and Recreation Director, uh, before I introduce George Borelli, President of Borelli and Partners, I just wanted to mention um, I just wanted to say, actually, this is a really exciting time and day for us uh, to be bringing this um, forward, this master plan forward. Uh, especially, this is a really exciting time for our staff as well as our community. Uh, and I just wanted to give a shout out to Alicia Castrocon, our aquatic coordinator, who for the last 14 years mm -hmm. has been putting band-aids and repairing and replacing decking and uh, emptying and filling the pool and remarsiding the pool and still continuing with lessons and open swims, summer camps, special events, uh, and she's just done a great job keeping the pool operational over these uh, last 14 years since we started talking about this aquatic uh, facility. So now I'd like to introduce George Borelli. He's a president of Borelli and Partners. Um, Mr. Borelli has 34 years of experience. He has extensive knowledge in architecture, landscape design, master planning, site design, contract documents, project administration, professional administration, and various other aspects of his profession. Mr. Borelli has been principal in charge of Borelli and Partners Orlando for the past 30 years. Borelli and Partners is staff's recommendation for the development of the Highlander Park Aquatic Complex Master Plan. A request for qualifications was properly advertised. There were eight responses received. Um, by the submittal deadline, and Mr. Borelli and Partners uh, was was recommended as being recommended by staff. The purpose of the RFQ was to solicit submittals from firms qualified to provide services to develop a master plan for the new city's aquatic complex. <coughs> the development of the master plan is the first phase of the service to be provided for this project. Borelli and Partners will provide three concept as part of the development of the master plan. In addition, Brilliant Partners shall provide a cost estimate for each of the phases of the concepts. The City Commission is only voting today on phase one, which is the master plan. Phase two will include design and permitting services required for the bidding and construction of the selected improvements. City staff will return to City Commission for the approval of phase two services before proceeding with with these, ser this, these services. And of course, that's because at that point when we bring the master plan, they, there'll hopefully be some decisions on what we're gonna be um, building for this project. An evaluation team was selected to review and rank eight submittals. The team was comprised of Lisa, Lisa Castricone, our city's aquatic coordinator, Andy Paget, senior engineer, who's also with us this morning, Mark Abdo, from the City of Largo Aquatics. Mark also is the founder of Florida Aquatics Council. On the committee, we also had Jessica Swanger. She's a resident and pool user. She has three children that use the pool as well, and myself. The team evaluated and ranked the qualifications of each submittal based on specific criteria, which was experience, team working together, their approach, their schedule, their references, and similar projects. The team then decided to, into our team, then decided to interview the top three firms. Subsequently, all five of the evaluators ranked Borellian Partners as the most qualified to meet the needs for this project. <clears throat> the, the evaluators felt that Borelli's team had the most experience with projects similar to the city's. Additionally, the evaluators felt that Borelli Aquatics consultant Martin Aquatic Design and Engineering had an excellent understanding of our project needs as well. And Martin Aquatic has done some work for us back in 2019. They did some uh, evaluating of our facility as well as, um, as well as some cost estimates for us. They also have 35 years in design and all different type of aquatic facilities and they are all listed in the submittal that I forwarded yesterday. Staff is recommending award of this project for architectural design services for the Highlander Park Aquatic Master Plan to Borelli and Partners in the amount of 
$562. In, in addition, before I turn it over to uh, Mr. Borelli, George Borelli, um, I just want to mention that in 2019, uh, the city had put out a survey to find out what the community likes and dislikes, features, amenities, programs, location year-round, uh, logistics of, the, of the, the facility, amenities in the facility, et cetera. Uh, then again, in, and we had over 600 responses to that survey. Uh, we started our survey process again to just refresh what we did back in 2019, and we opened that up on November 3rd, and we've already received 468 responses to our survey. So with that, I was going to ask uh, George Borelli to um, talk about his team and review the schedule and community approach to our master plan. So with that, George. Thank you, Vince. Good morning, Welcome, Mayor. George. Good morning, Vice Mayor and Commissioners. It's a pleasure to, and an honor to be here. Thank you for uh, um, at least staff selection so far of our incompetence in our team. Um, as Vince mentioned, um, I'm, I'm George Borelli. I'm the president, principal in charge of Borelli and Partners Architects. We've been around since 1968. My father started the business, and I've since taken over, um, so it's still somewhat of a family business. Um, we put together what we believe was a very, very strong team for this project, um, and as Vince mentioned, um, we partnered quite a bit on aquatic facilities with Martin Aquatics who's probably one of the world's leading aquatic specialists, um, both in competition pools as well as community uh, fun pools and, and activities. Um, other members of our team include SGM Engineering, and we are using their uh, West Coast office here in, uh, over in Tampa. Um, Avcon Engineering for civil engineering, uh, and Grafe uh, for structural engineering. And then two local firms, uh, George F. Young for surveying and universal engineering for <coughs> geotechnical engineering, as well as Bless Alliance um, Design and Construction, who will be our cost estimator. Um, Brilliant Partners is a small owned, minority owned business. Um, we believe in diversifying our team. While we have some larger firms on our team as well, we include minority owned and veteran owned businesses as well, and we regularly do so. We think it's very important that everyone has an opportunity to succeed. Um, so Vince has asked me to touch on the schedule. Um, this is our the master planning schedule. And uh, assuming um, you guys agree to our selection, uh, we will start the kickoff and programming meetings um, during the week of November, December. We'll be on site uh, walking the pool facility again. Um, we've toured it already with Alicia, Alicia and have um, a good understanding of what some of her her challenges are, and uh, you have a jack of all trades at Alicia. She um, she does it all. Uh, so we've got a good jump on that. We'll we'll be on site. We'll be doing our our kickoff meeting, our programming meetings to really understand um, and and hopefully disseminate at that point the survey information. So we really know what the community is wanting and what the city wants for this facility. Um, during the, the time frame of December 13th through February 11th, we'll develop three uh, conceptual master plans. This will be done in a black and white version um, so that they're easily editable and modified um, during the city staff review, as you see, which will happen um, during February 14th through March 20th. And we'll be finalizing the presentation materials, uh, finalizing the, the master plans, and then developing renderings, 3D imagery, uh, so that the uh, community, in preparation for the community meetings, they have a great, uh, vis have a lot of great visuals of what um, the three master plans would represent. Um, the, the, the plan is to have three community meetings, uh, two in person on one day, and then in a day or two uh, or so, uh, having a, a virtual meeting on Zoom for those who are not comfortable or couldn't make the, the morning or afternoon or evening public meetings. And that'll happen in that uh, few days of uh, March 21st to the 23rd. At that point, uh, the city staff will take uh, the plans to their advisory committees and present them and take input uh, from the committees, which will then be uh, brought back to us for implementation. And on May 3rd, uh, the plan is to bring these concepts to you, to present them to you, um, and uh, hopefully come out of that workshop with an improved uh, master plan to move forward with. That's the schedule, and that should wrap up around May 3rd. Is that your presentation? Yes. Okay. Uh, 
can you at least tell us, Vince, um, what the end result that you think we will get from this will be? The end result of the master plan will uh, show you three different concepts. The, each of the concepts will um, have cost estimates to them, each of the elements in the concept. So for example, if we're looking at putting in the um, zero depth entry pool and the bathhouse, those will have costs associated with them. If we want to continue, well, all, all of the elements will have costs. If there's water slides and, and sprays and a therapeutic pool, they'll all have a cost and a, uh, w with them as part of the end result of our master planning process. So that way the commission can decide um, the funding and to see how far we are, we'll be able to move forward with uh, the construction. Okay, uh, well I guess we'll start with uh, questions. Vice Mayor? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I think we all agree that it's not whether or not we need a pool, it's just what the, the new pool will, will look like. Uh, have you reached out or are you planning as part of your investigative process, reaching out to the high school and asking them what their needs are since it's the home field, I guess? Yes, Alicia has area. reached out to the high school. <clears throat> I believe they're putting together what their, their needs will be for this project as well as we have our own swim team. So we've reached out to both swim teams to get input from both of that, those groups. Because mm, I, I noticed what you have in here is uh, 25 yard lap lanes. And just to measure that against 50 at the Olympic level, I don't know what swim lanes, the distance is locally in the area. So I don't know whether 25 is considered small <coughs> or it's what everybody else is doing. Should we look at 50 yard lanes? I don't know. The one in the area is the long center that does have the Olympic size, but I'll let Alicia. Good morning. Um, so we did reach out to the high school, um, and, and I had talked to them over the years and all, and, and what we were interested in having that would work for the high school and the, um, our radiant swim team. That's the current swim team that we have. Um, the reason why they practice in yards and compete in meters at the pool is due to the depths. They can't dive in in the 25 yard area because of how uh, shallow it is and due to new regulation, it has to be a minimum of five feet for them to dive. So that's why we change the lane so that they start um, in a meter style and then they have to do the math to make it work out to, to meet the times of what they were um, racing for. So that's the reason. So it's it's really a deficit on our pool, which is why we have to turn them, turn the lanes and allow them to compete in a different way. Um, competing in the meters at the pool the way that it is, um, there's a couple of starting blocks that are right underneath the diving boards. So it makes it very difficult for a start because you know right above your head is the diving board. So um, it, it's just not conducive the way that it is right now. Now, like I said, I, I reached out and asked if they thought meters or the yards um, were preferable. And for high school, they do prefer uh, yards over meters. Do you know how that's measured at the collegiate level? Collegially, it is meters. And it's still meters there, okay. I believe so, that's correct. So we're not hindering any of our, our high school athletes from being able to get, okay. All right. All right. And I mentioned uh, Olympics earlier, and I guess that's aspirational, but the focus, I guess, should be more on collegiate, making sure that we're preparing mm -hmm. as best we can. Okay. Um, and this is going to be way off topic, and I don't know whether you've measured this, but uh, for any dive-in movie events, are, are they at capacity in the current pool, or do you see if we had a larger pool, if you build it, they will come? It's, they've been popular. I'll tell you, um, before the pandemic, we had um, Hook, and that, that was with the Robin Williams movie, um, and that one came close to selling out. The, um, the Halloween movie, uh, Hocus Pocus, oh. um, that one did sell out, and I actually um, had to tell folks, unfortunately, they couldn't come in. So um, it's not so much if you build it, they will come. It's also you know, promoting and, and uh,
putting on a great program will also do that too. You didn't have a quality movie. And Hocus Pocus is a quality movie. It is a quality yes. movie. <laughs> You're you got to pick them right, and they'll come for Absolutely. sure. Uh, but with a new facility, I'm sure that we could accommodate more programming, more special events. Um, so I'm excited about that. Okay. I mean, other than that, I'm more interested on the feedback you get from the residents Absolutely. On, on making sure we're meeting, meeting their needs. Uh, so that's all of the comments I have right okay. now. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Commissioner Franny? Yeah, I, I was going to make kind of bounce off one of the things you said, which is, you know, I, I know like forever ago, you know, because this is so long and coming, doing a new pool, but, you know, some of the competing interests were competitive swim, you know, fun swim, who are we building this for, how do we balance those things, are there other places that have more competitive so that we don't spend all our time in competitive, but do kind of the balance, right? And, um, and so I think those are some of the challenges you'll have about the competing interests, so, so to speak. Um, a, a couple things. Um, one thing I wanted to clarify, in, the, in the, um, the specifications, it says that all three community meetings are in person. So is that, but one's going to be Zoom only, or is it going to be both Zoom and in person? They're going to be two in person and one on Zoom. We just felt that having the Zoom meet, meeting might attract more people to attend that maybe still don't want to come in person. A mixed feelings, only because you're going to have the two in-persons on the same day. I know one during the day, one at night. So if you miss that day, your only option will be a Zoom. And, you know, people are starting to engage again. So, you know, I just a thought. But um, And then I assume if you don't, if you do Zoom for that one, you're going to make one of the, in, the six in-persons for something else. Is that... One of the six in the in the specs there's six in-person meetings that the contractor has to do that was three of them and three of them were in community and pool ones yes so. okay all right well that's your deal but i'm just highlighting it's multiply said in the specs so i just want us to get everything out of this guy george that we're supposed to um let's see um so um i'm speaking for myself anybody else can tag on though um, in terms of the phased-in approach of how you're going to do this, is it costing us more and you doing the scenarios like that? Are we giving up anything? Is it in terms of how we would build this? Are we having to compromise anything in the, in the final by phasing it in versus if we tell you right now we don't want to phase it in, we want you to just, we're going to do it all at once. Sorry, excuse me. Um, yes, I think, you know, in, in the long run, if you phase it, it probably will cost more because things aren't getting cheaper anymore. They're getting more expensive. So as part of our it effort... It doesn't hurt the design. I guess that's my... No, point. it does not hurt the design at all. compromise how you design no, it. No, ma'am. The fact that it's no. going to be phased it. And in fact, based on available budget, um, you know, I think we all probably realize the overall, at least what, what we've been looking at and hearing from the community with lazy rivers and slides and competition, activity pool, zero entry, it's probably going to be higher than the budget you have. Um, so we will look at phasing based on priority, based on the direction from the city and available budget so that phase one does meet your budget. Um, obviously, if, uh, if you found a windfall and, and wanted to build the entire complex at once, it would cost more initially, but it would cost less over the long term because of, of escalation. And, and we're going to escalate the phasing anyways on pricing. So if you don't do phase two or three, let's say for another five years, we'll escalate that cost to brush off the crystal ball and, you know, escalate those costs based on current trends uh, to tell you what it would cost in about five years. Okay. I mean, I, for one, am wanting to do it all at once if we can. So that's why I asked the question. Um, I, I think those are my biggies. I'm, I mean, uh, George, I guess I'll ask you this. Um, this is a really, really big project for us. Um, we have one pool, 37,000 people, a lot of homes that don't have pools. Um, we've been waiting a long time for it. So are you up for this very special Dunedin pool design that you're going to do? We are. We're, we're, our team is very excited about it. It's, um, it's a great opportunity. It's, it's, it's going to be a gem for the community, and we're super honored to be a part of it. We're ready. Thank you. 
Commissioner Kynes? Well, um, sort of along the lines of uh, Commissioner Franey, uh, I just, I'm sorry, but I can't wrap my head around that you're going to do this beautiful pool and then you're going to use that horrible bathhouse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't wrap it around that. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I, I got to say I'm, I'm with her. I don't disagree Let, with you. Let's do it right. Uh, find the money. Do it right. Um, I'm, I'm very interested also in the therapeutic pool. Um, I think probably people my age are very interested in the therapeutic pool. Maybe it's not just people my age, I don't know. But, um, you know, didn't you ask about that in the survey? I thought, uh, one of our surveys, how many, we've done 10,000 over uh, 18 million years, but um, I think that you did ask about the therapeutic pool. Yes, it's in the, the beneficiary, survey. As beneficiaries for, uh, you know, an aging population, correct? Yes, and so far, um, 59% of the four hundred and sixty-eight said that they would use the water wellness or, or exercise and 41% um, said they would like to see a therapeutic pool. Okay. There was a second highest answer and in that just category. Just explain to me, a therapeutic pool is if you, uh, is it with weights you use to build up um, lit knee and it, what is it? You can. I mean, it, the therapeutic pools can be used, it can be programmed for that, that sort of activity, for exercise, for rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they have, typically they have jets that can be used for massage as mm -hmm. well, that they're heated. Uh, so um, it's uh, a lot of, lot of programmatic opportunities in a therapeutic pool. They're generally smaller than the regular bigger, bigger pools for that reason, and, um, and a fairly constant depth. So it's sort of like a hot tub? Bigger. bigger, a big, uh, small, yeah. a bigger hot tub, right? <laughs> Is that sort of the idea? Yes. Okay. And and with, with respect to your comments on the building, the building is part of the scope of work. We we have to look at the building as part of this overall project to meet code. You don't, you you will not have enough bathrooms by expanding this this pool and this complex. Not only that, Alicia needs spaces for kids to gather during lightning storms, uh, meeting rooms. It, 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 yeah, it's lived its life, I think. Mm -hmm. it, Birthday it's parties. Probably, mm -hmm. we, all, we all dutifully uh, took our excursion to see it, and uh, that was quite eye-opening. I'm sorry, where, where did you go? We, we all went to see the pool. We had our excursion. Mm. Yeah. So um, those are my comments or questions or And whatever. also on, on the bathhouse, we have two concepts that are going to include the bathhouse being relocated. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we chose to keep one concept with where it is today is if we didn't have the money to build anything more than just the main pool. So you're saying the bathhouse is definitely in the mix. Well, it's going to be then, in the master plan, yes. But, but that seems like that's where the, some of the phasing was going to be. Yeah, in. Can I piggyback for a minute on this? I mean, personally, I wouldn't waste two seconds to leave that bathhouse in no. play. Mm -hmm. It's it's a disaster. It is it's a disaster. A, it's it's just should be. It's a disaster. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of the bathhouse. I mean, I just don't think we should waste any time thinking we're keeping that bathhouse. Yeah, I, I, we all we all agree with that. The, yeah, the so reason we did waste it that any way of our of, money or time or George's, you know. That's exactly what I said. I said, go ahead and replace the bathhouse. It is terrible. Mm -hmm. Those are my words. And we are looking for that <laughs> consensus direction, if that's the direction of the commission. Yeah. Yep. Well, now you three. got three. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> John. Um, thank you. No, no, I was, I was, oh. uh, th we're the on, on, on the bathhouse piece. Do we have on, consensus? On, 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 I haven't asked any yeah, yeah. questions. No, I know. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, Deborah. It's your turn. Oh, okay. I'm done. Thank you. I've kind of looked at this in, in two or three different phases, and I discussed this just a little bit with the, with the city manager. Um, as I look at this, we're, we're spending a tremendous amount of money um, to get a master plan, which is good. You want to have a master plan, and, and that's what we're spending the money on, so I have no questions about that. We're going to get a master plan. It's going to include everything. 
everything that could possibly be in there um, and where, what has to be moved and what doesn't. Um, we know we're going to do some of this. Um, is, is there a way that we're spending a lot of money up front just for the master plan without any definitive things? And I'm just asking. Um, should we step that up just a little bit to save some of that money because we know we're going to do some of this? And rather than, is any of that make sense to you? And my, my next question, which I won't ask yet, but it's going to be, um, when we get input, how, how valuable is some of that input? I'll discuss that later. So that's, my, that, that's the first question that I have. Um, so your first question regarding the value of the master plan? No, not really. Um, but it, we, we want a master plan. Uh, we know we're going to do some things in that master plan, uh, but we're going to have to go back and redo those um, again later because we're not going to get definitive information on that. We're just going to get we're going to get a plan, but no, is can you really do that or not? Well, well now we got to bring in another engineer to say, hey, now can we do that or or not? Is there a way to shortcut some of that from a cost saving standpoint and from a time standpoint? I'm just asking. Um. Good question. Uh, from let's talk about time frame, time point. Uh, from a time frame standpoint, um, there are some things we could be doing in the master planning phase that um, obviously would, would increase fees. But by bringing on and getting a complete survey done now, and versus when we, if we're selected and move on to phase one, we would have to have it then. So that that's not a and, and utility locates as well. So. We've been provided information by the, from the city on what's there, what they know that's there. Um, we've got surveys from all the parts and pieces around the community center, the fire station. I think the, the, the geotech report on the, the pool where you had some settling that was done. So we're going to make some assumptions based on that information. And we're going to use the base will be an aerial, Google Earth aerial versus a surveyed document. Um, to move into construction documents in the next phase, we have to have a survey that's accurate. We have to have eventually. Absolutely. Knowing once you select the master plan where the building or buildings may sit, how the pools are going to lay out, where stormwater um, is going to go, if we pave the dry, if we pave the parking lots, which are now a, a granite rock, um, we need geotech for that. But we don't want to do that until we know where things are, and then we will we'll make those penetrations. So that that probably can wait. Doesn't take a long survey is one of the things that I, you know, we probably would have done sooner, um, but it doesn't hinder us moving forward. It just that has to get done before the next phase of moving into <coughs> thematic design. Um, the we're presenting three master plans. That's you know there's there's a savings if you don't feel like you need to see three master plans. Certainly, there's it's much multiplying the effort. So. Um, and we're really going to take guidance, not only from the city, but from that survey that your residents are, are going to be are responding to very readily, it seems like now. So here comes the second question. Sure. Um, and, and I told you I was going to ask something about some of that research or some of it. Anyway, so the second question is, and I'm not being funny because then I'll go right to the right continue. <laughs> Have you ever done this before? Have I ever done what? Master plans like oh, this? Oh, yes. Before? Yes, sir. How many yes, times? Um, a hundred maybe? A lot, a, a lot. lot, yeah. A lot? Of all different kinds of types of facilities, from so, airports to zoos. So this everything is in interesting because, um, uh, so my experience, which is not in the pool business, when I know sort of what we think we want to do, I may use a different research technique as to how I'm going to de develop that product. Because I got a target group, and I and I and if I really do know my target group, and I'm not designing for any add-ons, okay, then I may go to a different kind of a research. Okay, I may go to a focus group, um, and those are those that are real targeted market. I mean, I really know who those people are, and and they help me, and boom, I can get it out to the market fast. Okay, I don't have to wait. Um, not that we're in the speed here. I'm just making that comment. So you've got a lot of experience in this. Have you have you done any any public, if I may, then or if, let me just say municipal projects by just doing one master plan? Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I think that we, we often develop versions of a master plan where you might locate a building in a different place or a field in a different place and give a couple options because one location may have an adverse effect on something else, but a positive effect on another component of the project and vice versa. So yeah, we have done them as one with some, with some option areas and we've done multiple different master plans for the same facility and same development uh, for, for different clients. What do you think the probability, I'm um, serious question for me. Uh, what do you think the probability of us coming up with anything that you're not familiar with in this project? Very doubtful. <laughs> I'd call it slim to none. Slim to none. Um, I mean, anyway, sorry, I mean, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. it's no quite okay. To, <laughs> none taken at all. To you or, and I didn't mean it, to, but, yeah. uh, and to people giving us input. No, thank you. I appreciate that. None taken at all. It's, um, we, you know, we've, we've, we've teamed with what we feel is one of the world's best aquatic designers who have seen way more aquatic facilities than we have even. We're pretty strong as, a, as an architectural firm in aquatic facilities. Our focus tends to be more on the collegiate level um, in competition pools, <clears throat> but we have, we worked, uh, we were the architect, the prime architect on the Naples Aquatic Center, which is a municipal aqua aquatic center. Um, and, uh, and Martin brings, you know, worldwide experience from fountain design to com competition pools to these community fun type pools with slides and um, water or splash pads and, and things like that. So I believe our, our team has a really good mix of, and, and knowledge of what's out there. Um, I, they shared, the, your staff shared the, um, the current survey with us and we, I sent that to our team as well so that anybody saw anything on it that needed to change. And, and in fact, we, we did make a, a recommendation on, on one of the activities, which was a zip line activity that, that was kind of an old, an old approach. So we, we proposed another newer, a newer approach, a newer approach, which I think goes well what's going on in, in, in yeah. that industry. So you consider yourself pretty much of an expert in this in this industry. Yeah, I think. And if I what I don't know, I surround my people with, that know a little bit more than I do. <laughs> I, I know the answer to the question before I'm asking. That's why I'm smiling. Um, it, it would seem to me that if we, if we go out and do a lot of research, and I love our people and I love to ask our people, uh, what concerns me always is the time of it, any misdirection that we might get, um, which I doubt would be very much, but here we've got people here that have been working on this for a long time, have a pretty good understanding of who's using that pool and when they use that pool. Um, I don't have enough information yet for me to really provide um, some sufficient input as to some of the things that might be used according to different times of the year. Correct. All right, so um, what question that I would be asking is, well, how many of our existing, how many people used our pool, for example, in December? And then how does that compare to another municipality that had, I don't know, maybe something that you would recommend? What did that do to that usage? Um, because we do have a lot of people that have pools at their, at their houses. Um, in, in my neighborhood, or mm -hmm. let's just pick another neighborhood, they have a lot of pools. Some don't. Right. Um, so we're really, it's really how people are really going to use this, not just how they think they could or might, or you know, someday when I get hurt I might, might want to use this pool. Um, who's, re who's really using that pool? We have people that know who's really using that pool and when they're using that pool. So it would seem to me that cobble that information together and cobble the information that you have, I'll bet if we looked at, and, and I'm not saying we shouldn't get information from people, but if we took, if you took a look at that, I'll bet you would give, you would give a, a, a package to us right now, a, perhaps even a single package, and say, here's what I would put in that space. Now, why do I ask that question like that, and you're nodding your head yes, I ask that question because if, if I were, um, if I wanted something designed and had the financial capacity to do it, I go out and find the best person to do it. I'm, I'm not in government now, I'm outside of government. I go and ask the best person that I know to do it. I'd tell them what I thought I wanted and I'd say, show me what you're gonna put there before you do it. Because I gotta get permission from the boss. I'm married. And, so you would come up with the best package that you would have based on the amount of money that I said I had. And 
If you were the best, I probably would continue forward, I would assume, because you'd probably be giving me the best that I could have for that money. That would really short circuit things and probably reduce costs significantly, I would think. Is that true or not? I think to some extent you're right, yeah. Okay. I don't want to ask you if, if you think we need to go through some of this, because that's not your, I don't, I don't want you to have to even respond to that. Um, so I'm looking at this, and, and I'm saying that if we asked, if we had a good enough cross-section group or a statistically sound group of people that use and don't use and might use, um, that we would probably have enough good information um, as, to, as to what we might, might be able to put there. If, if any time was of any concern for us or if we wanted to do this quicker or if somebody thought something was not good now, unacceptable. So if I may, I'd like to ask a question over here then. Um, when, we do these, when we do these surveys, um, are they statistically sound at all? And do we, give, do we go after any target groups or do we just let people uh, give responses? Do we know who those folks are? And is there any option for somebody to give multiple responses to, to something in an effort to, I don't know, they may feel like they're controlling something or, or don't they feel compelled, compelled to make sure that you know what I want. Laney's been involved with putting the surveys together. I'm going to have her come up and speak. Good morning, Laney Sheets, Administration Superintendent. Um, I, I'm not going to go out here and say it's a statistically, statistically valid survey to a, you know, a certain percentage degree. Um, but we do know for the community of our size that it is and the number of responses that we get, it is a valid sample of the community. I think it gives us a good cross-section of those who are generally interested in, in using our pool of the amenities they want to see. Um, to get over 600 responses the last time um, for a community our size is a very large number. Uh, normally on surveys, you're looking to get a, a, a couple hundred. To get 600 is like three times that amount. Can they... Can somebody take the effort to go through multiple times and use it from different computers? Absolutely, they could. Um, we can see um, through the, the software, um, you know, if it comes from the same one, we can eliminate those. Um, but I don't think that that is widespread and something that's going to really be enough to skew the numbers. Um, at this point, we're just trying to get a general feel of what people like, what they don't like, what they want to see, what they might participate in. They also give us um, the numbers on their household. So they tell us, I have two people in my household that are over the age of 65. They tell us I have one in, you know, child in elementary age, a teenager, and two uh, middle-aged adults. We are then able to take those numbers and compare them to uh, the population in Dunedin. And we did that last time. We're doing that again this time. We'll be able to compile those. And when we did this last time, um, we found that the numbers were an accurate cross They proportionally matched up to the demographic data for, for Dunedin. So we felt like not only was it a good amount of survey results that we got, but also that it was a good representation of the community that we serve. So it's not statistically sound, and when you look at statistically sound, then you have to determine, you have to determine who, who actually responded that you really wanted to respond and, and who didn't respond that you actually wanted to respond and many other variables in there. But here's a question I have for you then, and maybe someone else, <clears throat> I don't care who answers this, were there, were there a lot of surprises to what you received? So what we did get was... Um we had some things in the first survey that we honestly didn't know what was going to be num people's number one, two, three. Uh, we went into it kind of blind. Um, and so we were able to get from that uh, a pretty good idea of this is the most important thing people wanted to see and then, you know, and so on. But we, we just put the, the most popular amenities that exist at a variety of different municipal pools um, around the country, and we, 
we, we honestly didn't know what people would write them. So we had that good idea there. And then we also had a lot of opportunities for free response. And there were things that came out of that free response that we were not expecting. There were things about making sure that the program space uh, for the adults is separated from the program space for the children. Maybe also having dedicated times for more adult activities, you know, that want to come in and do their exercise um, and not have that cross path um, with the camp groups, for example. So there were some things that we were able to add and gain knowledge of um, if we had not done the survey. So some of these things are expensive. For example, having a professional come in and spend several days or something, it's expensive and you, you, you want to make sure you're going to get something for that. And that's why I'm asking the question. And we have a person who manages uh, this area. Um, do you mind if I ask you? I'm sorry to do this. And so you, I'm okay if you don't answer this. Did you find anything surprising in the, in, in, hugely surprising? And, and I'm going to ask you, sir, the qu same question because I'm going to assume you looked at this. Um, I'm, I'm just curious for the rest, for all of us. I would say I noticed um, in the last survey they wanted year-round operation. That was huge response. Another response was having evening swim times. Um, and some of the statements that went along with it was, I get off work at this time. By the time I get to the pool, you know, it, it closes. Um, and some of them referenced back when the pool used to be open till 9 o'clock at night. Um, or they would reference to when, you know, we were open in December or November. Um, we did have some of our um, residents who reside 50% in the north and 50% here um, that said they would have appreciated having the facility open during their time of stay. Um, and then I had families, now this is not from the survey, but throughout the summers of talking to people, they, they want a space somewhere they can be interactive um, and then our swim teams are recreational so they want you know space for them to swim and do their programming so I want to find a way where we can do both of those you know and meet all the parts and all the people in our community and make it a fun environment with fantastic so, programming <laughs> okay I'll, make, I'll comment about that later thank you very much and and did you go through the survey we have or? seen the survey results from the the first survey have not seen anything from the second but nothing really in the the first survey drew our attention i mean i think there was a big the, the desire i remember for slazy river was one of the things that kept popping up on the list and uh um zero entry um things that that parents you know i think appreciate quite a bit Thank you. I, I, I'll leave it at that. For the, I'm, I'm concerned about our surveys. When we do surveys, I'm concerned about who gives us the input. And, uh, and if, if, I were, if I were a business person, um, I'm not sure that I would design off of our surveys, um, although they're okay. They give some information. I think a lot of that information is held by professionals. And uh, unless, you're, unless you're really asking a very specific question, do you do you prefer this to be green or blue and why? And your user, and you're a real user, um, then, then I see that it, that it could be helpful. But thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. So um, it's interesting because I think John and I have some of the same thoughts, uh, which is sometimes unusual. But. <laughs> You know, but I, I know where he's going. I'm just going to say it differently. I tend to think pretty big picture, even though I'm extremely detail oriented. I, I tend to think really big picture um, and then kind of drill down from there. Um, and so, you know, kind of what I've asked myself is who are we and what do we want to be? That's the question in anything that we do when we go into master planning, right? Who are we and what do we want to be? I think you have to determine that through elected representatives, people that work with the people that use the pool now, people that are filling out the surveys, and what, what are, what's every other city around us within a reasonable driving distance doing? Because we don't need to replicate the Long Center because the Long Center is right over there, okay? Um, so 
I think you have to take all of those things into consideration. And I, I, I do think that I, I would hope that, George, you would do that along with our team who has on-site expertise is, tr you know, with the input of us of who are we. So once we identify that, that that's how you, then you create something. And I'm not sure we've answered that question yet. I think we all have our own ideas. And so I, I think we really do have to say, who are we? And so I'm actually, as I've been looking through this, actually feeling like maybe once you do a few of these steps that maybe you do need to come back to us and talk about who we are. And then if we can all agree on who we are and what we want, then, then actually bring the concepts. Because I, th I just think it's really important to identify that. And I feel like I'm not gonna, I have my own ideas of who we are which may not be the same thing that Alicia thinks, and it may not be the same thing Commissioner Franey thinks, and it may not be the same thing that C Commissioner Twonger or any of us think. I don't know. Um, but I, 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 kinda, I think that has to be established before you start coming up with designs. You know, when I was listening to you, Vince, and I understand why it's been put together this way, so no complaint on that. No. But you were, you were talking about, well, well, we'll bring back this amenity and how much it costs, and that amenity, I have no desire whatsoever to sit up here and have all us look at these different amenities and cherry pick. I don't want to do that. That is not our role. Um, but I do want to know who we think we are. Are we going to be the Olympic pool? Is that where we want to go? Are we going to be the family fun center? Are we going to have stations? Who are we trying to reach? Um, and once we know that, and, and y'all may know that already in your minds, but we've not had that two-way dialogue, if you will, which includes what the residents have to say and all of these other things. Um, I want to know what that is so that when we do see one, two, or three, whatever it is, concepts to meet that who we are question, then I know what I'm looking at. So that's the piece I kind of feel is missing a little bit, you know, having gone through that. And so I think what I'm saying is similar to what Commissioner Twonga is saying. Um, so I'm not complaining. I, I, I want to I move on and have a master plan. Mayor, I don't really understand what you mean, though. Okay, so... How do so, you change the layout here? I'm not, I'm not following. Okay, well, it says, it says here, develop... The first, thing, after the kickoff and the programming meetings, you're going to develop three master plan concepts and present it to the community. But nobody here has told me who we are, what are we trying to achieve? Are, you know, are we going to be, is our role competitive? Is it family fun? Or is it a piece of both? Nobody's telling me any of that. We have these surveys, but nobody has said, what are we trying to be? And guess what? We've got the long center over there, so we really don't have to be competitive other than focusing on what the high school and the swim team that we have. I mean, you've kind of said that, but you only said that as a response to an answer, to a question. It wasn't part of the presentation of who do we want to be. But there is a little bit of a description from the prior public input on you know, in part of our packet, and it talks about aquatic master plan shall at a minimum incorporate the following, and it's a list, and then there's some additional elements that it may include based on funding. So, I mean, there is some pieces of that. Right, but I, it's an idea. It's... Well... <clears throat> anyway, look, I'm not trying to throw this on, on its head. This is not a complaint. I just want to know that when we have our master plan, plans, you know, the options, when the community sees the options, that it's, you know, it's based on what I just described earlier. Um, yes, the surveys. Yes, the, um, you know, some of our input. Um, what is surrounding us in the area so we don't need to repeat ourselves, if you will. Um, 
I'm not suggesting that we change something. I, I just really want to know what we're trying. I want to know what we're trying to achieve, and I think we're all trying to go in the same place. But um, so some of the notes that I made, <laughs> um, you know, like even when you were talking about the amenity and how much it costs, I want to know from the expert what are the amenities we should have. That we should have a minimum, you know, at a minimum, we should have these, and these are the latest things, or whatever. Um, I just want to make sure that we get that input from you. Absolutely. Because I don't want us up here picking, you know. Now, if we want to make it bigger and better and we say, hey, add this, but I want to know, you know, what what's happening in today's world of once we do determine what kind of facility it is we want. Um, I want to know that the bathhouse, I'm going to tell you, it can't just be a bathhouse because it's not next to the community center. So Alicia has no place to put the kids. What if the kids want to have a birthday party inside? What if they want to have, I don't know, a meeting about what if the swim team wants to have a, there's all different kinds of things it can't just be a tiny little pass through building I don't see but again it's not my expertise so I know that's going to be bigger than than probably anything that we've expected um, it would be interesting to know and you guys may not be able to answer that but do we need to do the survey for you to be accurate in what you're recommending because what I don't want I don't want to you know, once we choose something and choose how we go the path forward, um, oh, by the way, what we recommended can't work because the survey showed X, Y, and Z. And again, I hadn't thought about any of that before I came here. It's just listening to my colleague, as, as we should be doing up here. So I throw that out at you. And again, I'm not trying to stop this process. I'm just telling you, you guys can figure out what you might need you know, if that's a concern of yours. Um, Mayor. Yes. If I may. Just for clarification, what you're really looking at is us <clears throat> establishing what our niche is. What our what? Our niche yeah. is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What? I guess it's a good way. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's who do we want to be? And then do we all agree with that? And then go crazy with it. You know, mm -hmm. give us our great options. Get our... You know, I don't want you all to have to sit there and try to guess. And then we have to go back at it again. I have visions of, and this in no way is a complaint to anyone, so please don't take it that way. But, you know, we went through a lot of back and forth with the city hall, right? And I want to try to see if we can not have that happen with this. There's going to be. There's going to be some. It happens with every huge thing. This is a legacy project, you know, so we're going to we're going to have that. But I also think that you know, if we can answer some some questions before, it would be great. So also um, I agree. I would like to build all at once and not do phases. Um, if possible, because I think it's cheaper in the long run. Um, I think we have opportunities. I also don't want to see the inconvenience to the users every couple of years, because you're going to have to close down certain things. And, you know, so if you're going to inconvenience, I believe inconvenience people once and call it a day. Um, and it's a lesser cost doing it that way. Uh, so when it comes to phasing, you know, again, I would look to Jennifer. I don't want to try to dictate that piece of it, how you do that piece of it, or, or not do that piece of it. I just want to say I, I really have no interest in phasing. That doesn't mean that there might not be one of those, oh, we're going to, we like all of this, and but two, three years from now, we're going to add this crazy slide. 
okay. That's not what I think of as phasing. You know, I'm talking major construction, so. And I think we had consensus direction on that in the commission. It sounds, it sounds like that. Um, you know, so it's kind of similar to what John was saying too about the, about the you know, who's our target market? You know, and I, I think you guys are getting an idea of that. I'm, I still don't know what that is though. Um, I can certainly tell you, I think we want to be something different than the Long Center. I think the Long Center is fabulous. It's absolutely fabulous facility. But, and it was a very expensive facility and it's widely used. Very happy with that facility, even though we don't operate it, but it's right across the border there. So I can tell you, I don't have any interest in duplicating that. Um, high school participation was on my list. I want them to be involved before you get to us, you know, and that they've seen some of the proposals that they, you know, the expertise that they have there. Um, the numbers that you provided with us last night um, with the, the uses, you know, the number of users, it's, um, I mean, I kind of knew this in my gut, but it's just interesting to see how many users were using the spray ground, right? And I know you're not saying unique users, but users, whatever. That tells you a lot about some of the amenities that you might want to have at the pool, right? I mean, I think that tells you a lot. Uh, sorry, I'm just reading all my notes because I put them <coughs> everywhere on this piece of paper. Mayor, we'll get another chance to. Yeah, yeah. Because I just asked questions. No, no, you got to. I have, I have comments that I want to make yeah, and I, I, I stuck to questions. I have a comment. Right, but, I mean, I. Yeah, after it. I have a lot of comments, but not that much, no, really. <laughs> They're crisp, succinct. Well, and I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm brief and brilliant. I'm trying to do, it's, their questions and their comments at the same time, but they're, because I, I don't know if maybe I missed something, you know? Like when I say who we are, you might be able to get up and say, this is what it is. This is what we're shooting for. Um, and so a question for you, George, is in your world of doing pool stuff, um, what do you, what do you know about teen usage of pools? Teen, teens, not little kids with the spray grounds and not the adults and the lap swimmers or the parents of the little kids, but the teen 13 and up. Practically, they, you're, you know, you're going to find more activity type um, uh, elements or, or, or amenities for the teens, something that's going to keep them engaged and, and active. Um, so slides, uh, zip lines, you know, the cl water climbing walls, those kinds of things tend to be, uh, my belief, tend to be used more by teens than younger. Our kids tend to use more of a zero entry because moms feel more more safe that way. Spray uh, splash pads, spray pads. Uh, typically, or you'll see younger kids because while they're technically considered a pool, but you obviously don't have the, the water depth issue, mm -hmm. but they're able to play and interact with the with the jets and the nozzles and the sprays and the toys that typically are found on a on a spray pad. And then teens are you know into the comp starting the competition, so you know having a lap swim component uh, with starting blocks so they learn how to come off blocks and they learn how to swim in lanes. That That's typically when you start seeing kids, you know, going into their preferred sport if it's swimming. And how about the, uh, you know, I mean, I, I saw what the survey asked, so some of these questions I'm asking are similar to what was on the survey, but I, I kind of want to know the answer um, from your perspective. You know, the whole volleyball thing. And, and, you know, is that a teen use? Is that an adult use? Is it both depending on if there's a party or just a Saturday afternoon? Yeah. Um, it's funny enough, it, I've seen lately it's been more the elderly 
use than, than younger, but I can't say that it's not something that the youth would use. There are some communities where doing a, a pool renovation for Royal Highlands community in Leesburg, and they are adamant about having water volleyball, and it's a 55 plus community. Not what I would have expected, quite honestly. Um, but that's an activity they've really enjoyed. Um, so they, they want their pool to be retrofitted because now it's pole is on the deck, one's tied to in a, in a stanchion, tied to the deck. It's, it's rigged and it's not, it's not nice. So, they, so part of the renovation is to have a proper volleyball net. But uh, again, not what I would have expected. And what about volleyball outside of, like, you know, on a sand sure. area? I think that's, you know, it's compatible with pools. You got you play volleyball, you get hot, you're going to want to shower off and then jump in the pool. Yeah. So making sure that, that they have the amenities to shower before they get in the pool because you don't want them bringing all that dirt into the pool. Sure. From, but, I, there, you know, those are those, that and many other activities can be compatible that's not a swim program. Right. And when you come back to us with the plans, um, we're... As part of this plan, we're going to need to understand people, employee needs that are generated. Any, It doesn't matter what plan you give us. It's not going to change the need of the number of employees, I don't think, maybe by one person, if, if at all, meaning the difference between one plan and the other. But obviously, if you have a more active facility, there's going to be employee requirements and that type of thing. Will that be part of, at, whether it's from you or you all? Yes, and that, that is important information. <laughs> so, that, so if I may, the, the, the first step in this process, the programming meetings, that, that's the foundation of this project from the beginning to the very end when you cut the ribbon and open the, open the, the park, the aquatic center. It's so important that we not shortchange that process because we don't know who you are yet. We're going to find out. We know a little. We've walked the facility, toured it with Alicia, heard her speak to us about what her needs are, looked at your pump room. I mean, we, we have a good idea of the condition that your facility is currently in, and we have some knowledge of how it's being operated and some of the spaces that are needed. Um, and, and you're right. It's more than just a – the building's more than just a bathroom structure. It is. You need a new bathroom structure to meet code. That's a, that's a given, but you need meeting rooms. You need a concession. You need you know places where you can have activities. And and I would you know I, you know I would certainly one of our our advice uh, advisement would be that you know think of it as an intergenerational center because if you start building different spaces for different types of people, where do you end and how big does the building get? So what we would recommend is looking at how you program the space, but make it multifunctional, make rooms multifunctional. So maybe it's a divisible, big room that can be divisible, divided, and you could have different activities going on at the same time in, in the building portion. Um, so the finding out about who you are and helping to get to that level, finding out how, how Alicia operates, and if we implement all these features, how does it, what does that do to her staffing? Um, because there's, there's rotation of staffing, there's sight lines, um, right now, there's some, some challenges with the splash pad out front in the pool in the back of the building in terms of being able to manage and see and, and, and you know, and, and keep a lifeguard uh, visible at all times there. Um, so we want to we wanna hopefully solve, help solve some of those problems, those management pro problems through design. But we really need to know what your dreams, your wishes, your aspirations are in that first phase with no holds bar in terms of ideas, and then we'll synthesize all that into a, a, gra a plan and, and put a price tag to it, and, and in the end, you know, it'll be you, the commission, that says, yes, we want to do it all, or we want to do phase one and two first. Um, and and we'll, we'll obviously look at those, those phasing opportunities so that when a new component of the aquatic facility comes on board, it's not shutting down the facility so that it can't be used, that's gonna be important. I truly feel there's gonna be a phase where you will have to shut down at some point. Um, but I, I, you know, I think your ideas of, of trying to make the, the hurt or the hit once 
is better than trying to do it over the years because every time you do an expansion, you will have some disruption. You're going to have construction equipment on site, having to mix with public, and that just it's never a comfortable, good thing to do. So, so when you just said a little a couple of seconds ago about the pro, in the first phase is when you're going to figure out you want to know what we all want, right? Right, what our vision is anyway, and the programming meetings, what you all are seeing or, or knowing or the needs are and all of that. Is that what we should be telling you today or is there a check-in that you're going to come back to us and say, this is what we've learned? You, you've sat down now and discussed the surveys, the multiple surveys we've had. You've looked at our 2000, was it seven or nine? Ten. Ten, whatever plan. You've looked at some of the surveys from 2019, you've looked at the survey here, you've talked to the staff who deals with it every day and hears from people every day, you've, you've looked at what's in the area, these are some recommendations, but we want to hear from you. Is that a check-in meeting that we're going to get the opportunity to have maybe as a just a work session, um, a informational thing where we're just kind of going back and forth and then you go forward and d do your concepts? That's certainly a possibility. I mean, you're obviously very welcome at programming meetings. If, if Oh, no. You, no, no, no. Uh -uh. I can already see her shaking her head. You don't want us there. That's No, that's their time. That's their time to do that. I'm saying, can you see it be beneficial? I can see where that would be beneficial. Yeah. But um, do you do that normally in your process? I mean, I'm not trying to change the world here. No, we, we have. I mean, again, every, every client's different. Every municipality is a little bit different. And um, we, we will produce a program document um, that, that'll probably be more detailed on the building component, but we'll, we'll also identify the aquatic elements as part, of, of, part mm -hmm. of the overall program so that it's a, you know, and it's not a plan. It's just a document. It's probably an Excel spreadsheet with square footed um, of the element or spaces. Yeah, I don't care about square footage. So, that, so that'll... that'll the that program don't... itself I care about, but I don't care about that piece of it. Big picture. That document may be, may be beneficial to, as a check-in, it certainly could be presented to you. I, I'm... Well, I, I put it out there for my colleagues to think about and let's see if they I, I think it might be beneficial just to, as a check-in, not as a controlling tool, but to make sure, again, before you then, these are some of your recommendations as ideas. And then you go and take what those things are after you put them in. I'm not talking about the pictures. I'm talking about just discussion. Then you take, you put all that together, all of you guys in coordination. You take it to the community, and then that comes back to us as well. You know, I'm not trying to kill the process here or change it up. I want to make sure it's authentic to what it should be. I just want to make sure that we, we are all in agreement as to that question, who we are. Um, and then I also agree with Commissioner Franey, the input sessions. Um, again, this is a detailed thing. I don't think they should be in one day. I think you got to do it over a couple of days. But I wanted to say that before I forgot about it since I saw that on the board. Okay, I know everybody wants to. Um, Mayor, can I just yes, sir. Say, say one thing? Um, in in our, my travels looking at other pools, and also um, with what the information I've seen on three different surveys, and I, I really don't want to talk too much about the one we're doing now because we're only about halfway, halfway through it. Sure. But the, the one question that I would ask to all the pool managers is, how long do people stay at your facility? And when there was swim lessons, which are very, very important, and, and lap swimming for exercise is really, really important, it's pretty much what we have. And we have a time where kids are cooling off for, for summer camps. But when, when some of these facilities were built with the slides and the sprays and the, the, the lazy rivers, um, this, the, the actual time frames, and again, this is from having conversations, went from an hour to like three hours, concession facilities. So, and then when I, when I compare what, what I've heard from other pool managers and what I'm seeing in our surveys, you know, we're right on with having those additional fun things to keep kids there. People, their parents come home from work, that they join them. There's a concession facility for, 
you know, getting something to eat. There's more than just, um, and, and I, I do not want to downplay because it's the most important thing is the swim lessons. Um, but there's other things to keep kids acclimated and learn and, and have fun to want to get in the water and learn how to swim. So these are the things that we've been using as a baseline for our survey and, and our hiring our consultant and attending community meetings to see if those hypotheses are, you know, are correct. Because I'm hearing this from other, other pool facilities that went from one hour to three hours because there was much more fun activities to do. So they get their swim in, they get their play in, and they get their um, lessons, and they get their fun, and they get their food. <laughs> it's all about food. <laughs> and or if there's therapeutic elements, they get to spend time in, in, in the warmer water. I'm going to ask one more question before I go back to my colleagues. And it's, you know, not a question. I think that it's kind of one of those questions you're not sure whether you should ever ask in public. But um, we'll find out. We're saying words that shouldn't be said. But I'm yeah. Just <laughs> when we were talking about the uh, bathhouse and how it has to be something more because it we don't have it's not attached to the community center. Is there? Should we be considering attaching it to the community center? And let's let's not talk about all the reasons we shouldn't because I already know that I'm I'm just asking the question, should we? You want my answer? Anybody's answer. If we were building everything from day one, I would say yes. But what we know now and the amount of events that we use on the Great Lawn, mm -hmm. actually one of the concepts from the wallovers 10 years ago was showing it attached. You have your one point of entry, people come in, parents might take their kids to the, the swim, to swimming, or swim lessons, and then they go work out in the gym. You have the one point of entry. Um, there'd be no question in my mind that's where it would have been. But now, knowing what we know, right. I, I don't know if, and to, to switch it over and move the event area, I think the event area ties into the building as well. Mayor, may I? Sure. No, I mean, historically, I was here, and so that was debated heavily. I mean, that was like, and there was pros and cons. I mean, you could just match up the sides of pros and cons. And it was the decision, and, and I don't, you know, sometimes I think, oh, I wish we would have done it because it had a lot of synergy. But the reason it was done was because of the Great Lawn, to preserve the event space, to preserve that, and you could not, you would have taken up the whole Great Lawn with a pool. And so that's what was done, and that why the, the picture was community center, and then way at the end of the Great Lawn is the pool. Now, you know, you lost a lot with that, but you gained a lot. And so when you say in retrospect, now that we have all the events, but that was the reason it wasn't done, to provide for those events and divide for the Great Lawn and kind of, night, you know, also just the green space view of the Great Lawn. And you feel, um, I, I know right now we have the stage that we still can't figure out how to utilize correctly on the back of the building. When your sun, sun's in your eyes and all that, I mean, I get all that, but you feel that a stage on the other side with the lawn is not workable. Where the pool is, mm -hmm. to move just to flip flop, mm -hmm. I don't think so. Okay. And I'm not saying we should do this in <coughs> any way, shape, or form. I just felt like I needed to ask that question because yeah, we're going to make a big, we're going to need a bigger building. And I, I really felt like we need to understand that, that, that we're making a conscious decision. Yeah. That's it. That, That's that, the that, only reason it's, it's I day. brought it up because yeah. somebody will say, why didn't you do this? And more so than I likely, wanted to hear from you why we're not doing it. And more than likely, you would probably have to add another restroom building mm -hmm. attached to that building because I, I doubt Yeah, yeah, no, they're not going to traipse in and out of the community. Well, they didn't probably count for the toilet count that you would need for the deck in the pool yeah. area. So, I, I, okay, sorry. All right, so we'll go back around um, for, you know, final comments or responses to anything <laughs> anybody else has had to say or whatever. Vice Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I guess my... My biggest concern is that when we look at who we're building it for, that we're also not trying to compete with the water parks of the state. 
and that to you know do do we need the lazy rivers do we need the big slides do we need all of that is that something we need or are we just trying to keep people from going to um, Tampa or Orlando um, yeah my yeah my comment back towards uh, supporting the high school absolutely but I, I I don't want my comments to be construed that I think that we should be Olympic aspirational and things of that nature. I agree with the mayor. We should let the Long Center be the Long Center, and that's that's a facility we should not be competing with. Uh, we should be competing with the interests of the city and the residents that live here. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, end of that comment. Uh, teens, I do challenge with the activities that that the teens need, but I also know that teens are very adverse to supervision. And with the with the with the zip lines, and and all of those, and that's going to take a lot of supervision on part of staff for 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 safety reasons. And I and I wonder at the first part of that whether uh, the teens will just get yeah, peace out. I'm I can go hang out on the causeway with my friends by myself, and nobody's hassling me. I don't get the zip line, but nobody's hassling me. And um, zip line to the pool. I like that. Well, that, that's actually one of the amenities, right? With the <laughs> zip line and then that, that ladder thing across. But I do agree that, right, if you want teens there, you need the activities. I, I get that. So that's just making sure we get what we want. Um, I did take the survey uh, while we were all up here. And I, <clears throat> one of the, just the way my mind works. It's always nice that if you want all these amenities, that somehow there's a, a price tag attached to that because that's the way we all shop for cars. Yeah, I want the amenities. Ooh, I don't want it that badly. And so I think that even the residents would think that way. You know, I want that lazy river. I want the zero gravity or entry or, or whatever it was called. Ooh, that's the price, you know. So that there is some measurement of that. And then also it always makes the residents aware that whatever they're asking of their city they're understanding what what the costs are to that. Um, uh, I do love the concept of being intergenerational, and that's something that the city is desperate for, is to have those common places of, of, of meeting and interacting with, with a different generation. Um, goes back to who we are. Um, uh, water polo, water, within that survey of all these things, do you want the volleyball, do you want the water polo? Uh, sure I do. Oh, that means that if I want water polo that now we can't have <coughs> swimming. You know, I might not want that water polo so much. And so it's a matter of also <coughs> understanding where all of this fits in as to whether or not we want it or not, along with the cost. And I know that that's, I know this is a complicated issue and knowing that this is almost a city hall kind of concept to where we're not going to build a pool every two years. So this is our crack. It, this is this is the way we think the pool should look like 30 years from now or whatever the lifespan is yeah, i was going to say 75 years but yeah and we know that's not true so whatever the life cycle is of, of pools so i just want to make sure that because uh, this is expensive and i want to make sure that we're meeting the needs of, of the, the the needs of the residents with a little bit of bling but this isn't a big giant christmas wish list that uh, we can have everything we want because we're not trying to compete with Orlando. Um, um, anyway, that, those are my concerns. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner uh, I do have one question before I make my comments, um, and that is the spray ground. Is that an immovable, I mean, is that kind of we're going to have to, we can't move it, so we've got to make that fit the rest of the design? Anything can be moved. Yeah. Um, just cost. So we know that that's a challenging aspect of this project and is one that's going to probably be a little bit polarizing to some people. It's currently free. And one of the things we're going to hope to work through with you and staff is whether it remains that way, whether it comes inside the so-called fence and is a, now a charged element, whether it stays where it is and it gets renovated. We're going to look at all those features, all those aspects, because uh, as we understand it now, that, that uh, splash pad creates a ton of maintenance for Alicia and her, her crew, and, and, and it, it's also a, a supervision issue as well because it's not a great sight line because it's on the outside, on the back side, of the, or the front side of the building where everything and, and is. And I share both those concerns, and that's why, yeah, I mean, I just think we need to 
think big so, on that. I don't, I don't know the answers. I don't know the best place to end up, but that's why I wanted to ask the question. Um, so, um, you know, when you talk about target market, and, and Mayor, you know, I, res I certainly respect what you're saying. I mean, I'm sitting here, truthfully, for me, um, with th 30 years of input in my head, because I've been here as a staff person, I've been through all the cycles. Vince and I were just talking yesterday, you know, Peg Cummings, who obviously talks to me all the time about this, very passionate. You know, you guys went to a conference, what, 15 years ago when you just started? And this has all been just, you know, so all this input and all these thoughts and all this discussion about Long Center and not Long Center and competitive versus none. And so for me, I don't know. You feel like you already have it a It seems clear to me. Yeah. It seems like first and, more, for, first and foremost, we have one pool. This is our, this is our moment. This is our community pool. I love the intergenerational term. Georgia, I think you used it. I love that. Or you got to use programming, you know, not physical structures, you programming to kind of make those separations. Um, you know, you know, I don't want to be long center either. And I think this discussion's been had over the years about, you know, yeah, we don't want to build it to be a competitive center. Now, should it help, you know, with practice and have some of the basics to help with practice? Yeah, you try to do that. But first and foremost, it's a community pool, and Vince, great statements about it's not just a place to come for a one-hour swim. It's a place to be. It's a sense of place. It's a place for families. You know, so my, my once-in-a-generational opportunity, Penny for Pinellas Signature Project, 37,000 population. It's our one pool. Many older homes don't have pools. It's Florida. It's hot. What a great place to come and spend time and have food and a sense of place. Um, long overdue. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna finish my comments. Well, I will say I think Largo did a lot of this stuff. Um, and, you know, way back. I mean, theirs is probably older now, but they had a lot of revenue recovery too. Not just fun and a great place to a be. Ton a ton of revenue, of revenue re re recovery. Re recovery. So I mean, it's just um, and and you know. Um, I think like the Lazy River, some great slides. Think about the spray ground. When the spray ground was built, they came in droves because it was fun. It was a place to be. We needed to be fun. We needed to be a place to be. I'm telling you what, the number one thing I want to do is be in the Lazy River. I don't want to be with a bunch of kids in the pool. I want to be in the Lazy River. Me and too. if you have pina coladas, I'll have that too, but we probably won't. Um, so I just, you know... I mean, yeah, obviously we don't want to Venture Island slides, but it costs, what, 50, 30 bucks a day to go to Venture Island. You know, we, we, and the drive. We just need a place to be. I will finish. I got a text from Peg Cummings. Oh, good. What she's and probably saying, this tell is the mayor to shut This up. was before <laughs> some of the others. She may have a, she'll have a lot more comments as this goes. Dry areas are important, too. Birthday party rooms need two for rentals. They will be hugely popular. Bathhouse needs to be bulldozed. And in caps, her, fi <laughs> her final comment in caps, do it right or be sorry. So that's my comments. Couldn't say I don't agree more. Peg. Yeah, that was great. Mm -hmm. Now, Commissioner Kranz. you know, I, I, I want to throw something out there that because you all started it when saying, well, should we move the whole thing over to, you know, near the community center? But I've been here a long time, too, and I remember, Vince, that we talked a lot about whether at some point, and I am all for this, trust me, I want to get this done. I'm not personally sure about the Lazy River, if, it, if they stand the test of time, personally, but, you know, who knows. But, Vince, I remember that a long time ago, we talked a lot about, you know, if we have any kind of amenities in the South Side too, at some time. We talked a lot about that because sometimes it's too far to go for some people across, you know, there's a great, there's a great um, short story, too far to go. But, you know, it's too far to go because of transportation needs, whatever, even to go up to this, well, I'm sure it's going to be an amazing pool. And we want it to be an amazing pool. We've only spent 15 years trying to get there. 
30. 30. 30. 30. <laughs> but um, I don't want you all to forget that at some time we really do need to look at the south side for some sort of recreational amenity like that. I mean, I feel really strongly about that. So I'm putting it out there. Y'all are going to have to do it. Don't let this thought go. Um, because I think it, I think it will come into its own time. But I think, and maybe Vince, there the school is thinking about building a pool there, where our poor little co-location thing <coughs> is, was, whatever. And maybe that would be an opportunity to broaden something to work with the Pinellas County Schools in the South. So I'm just giving you some ideas. Please don't let this idea go. And um, I'm very excited uh, for this pool. I want to do it right. And I don't want to mess around with phase one, phase two, da, da, da. Me neither. You know, Me as neither. things go and, you know, prices are going to rise. You know that. They are now. I mean, it's amazing. And so <clears throat> let's just bite it and you know do it and uh, uh you know i i totally understand that you're going to look at particular components and say is it worth the cost of this particular component um, and that's that's perfectly fair but i mean we know we need a pool we know we need a bathhouse we know we need some recreation i mean uh, for your training for the high school. We know we need, you know, places little babies can go and learn to swim. In Florida, of all places, do they need to learn to swim? It's huge. And, you know, I don't know. When I was a teen, I hung out at the pool. Of course, that was the only thing to do in Salisaw, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but, you know, um, we all hung out at the pool. That's where you saw everybody. So it was, you know, it did have that, the, the intergenerational feel. I would have said it was more kids all the way up to the teens. So, you know, I don't know. Oh, I can't that. disagree. No, it's the <coughs> Virginia Street. I, that was my childhood. Oh, that's where we went. That's yeah. part of my comments. So it's, we yeah. were there every weekend. The teen Absolutely. center? Every single at the teen uh, just center. No, at just where the fire admin building is so today. You, that's where we, every single weekend we, I was there. Yeah. Rode my bike. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And, um, you know, so anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to this. It is long overdue. Um, I want it to be the best it can be. And then I really want to you all to keep in mind at some point we need an yeah. we need an amenity in the south side. Well, don't it's forget, through, just uh, like everybody rode their bikes to Virginia Street, south yeah. side, right on the trail, ride your bike, nice you know bike racks, you know. Well, I'm there. just saying that I get you a little. I get you, but people, at least for now. But know. the trail there is perfect because right. you're not you're. It's a much safer. It's a way. safer way to kind of just get right there. It so. is, but, but I little people can't really do no. that yeah. so much. And then it depends on transportation needs, even for older people. Yeah, more. I understand. I got so it. anyway, I just couldn't help myself. I don't think we're going to get to commission discussions, so I just decided to go ahead and throw it in. Okay. <laughs> you go, girl. Commissioner Targa. Thank you. Before I make my comments, I would like to ask a, a question. Um, we have this plan in front of us, master plan schedule, and included in here is an advisory committee meeting down below, uh, almost the, the second item on here. And that's after the community input 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 meetings, and that's after three master plans have been, been developed. So I would assume then that, that that community input is going to be looking at those three master plans and picking out what they like out of that. And then what is the advisory committee and who are they and what are they going to do? Well, one of them is be the Parks and Recreation Advisory Committee, but uh, we spoke about, we've been speaking about the pool for a long time with, with that committee. And I am trying to encourage them to attend the community meetings as well so they can hear what you know, other people are uh, saying about 
or plans, uh, and also be able to give their, their input. The other then would be the Board of Finance, and it could even be the Environmental the EQ. Committee. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. and we may need more than just a week to do all that, um, because I don't want to miss any committees, the disabled, the, uh, uh, the ADA committee. I, I don't want to miss the any committees that need to be in included in this, at least to understand. And of course, that's all before we would come back to the city commission. And do a workshop. And meanwhile, everybody's standing up and saying, well, we, 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 kids can ride here and kids can ride there. We don't know if kids are gonna even ride anymore to, to these places. Uh, and that's the real world. That is a very real world. What, what my ex, uh, ex, uh, experiences are, I don't really try to relate to too far back because it's confusing. Um, it, I think I make a bad decision from that. But as I said before, what I was attempting to do was shorten this. I was attempting to save money on this. And I was attempting to say, if we know, if we think we have some kind of an idea of what we might like to have, and be careful here because as I just pointed out, you go, you go, to, you go to all of these different committees and depends on what you're asking them for, they're all gonna have their opinions and we're gonna start talking about lines and all. We've all been involved in this. I've been involved in this since the early 2000s here in Dunedin, given input, given input, given input, gone to meetings, gone to meetings. Here's the input, here's the input. Now we're getting more surveys, more input, more input, more input. Um, again, if I were gonna do this, if I were gonna do this and I was independent and I wanted to build this, I would go to this gentleman right here because he's the best. We chose him, we like him, and I would ask him to build something for me. And I wouldn't come, I wouldn't try to tell him about a zip line. Uh, I would tell him, you give, me the, you give me what I think is gonna be the coolest thing for this purpose, and here's how much money I have. I know we don't do that here like that, but that's what I would do. Because he would then max out what I need to have. I want it all built at one time, so don't do any preliminary stuff. Do it all at once, boom, and give it to me. Now that's a dangerous step for, for government, I think. Um, but, but we're gonna have all of the same, listen, we went around the room here and people are telling you one, one needs a, I don't mean, I'm not knocking us, I'm just saying one wants this and one wants that and one, and that's just five of us up here. Um, uh, who's using this pool? I mean, is it, are we building this pool? Are we building a recreational center? Are we building a, you know, we have to say, what do we, what do we want? What is this thing? And who's using it? Is this being used by who? And uh, our residents or other residents? And when do we want them to be able to use it? Uh, do we want them to be able to use it 24-7, 12 months a year, or, or what? Once we decide all of that, because that's what he's going to ask me when I go to him, he won't let me out of the door until I tell him that, because he's going to give me one, one shot. So I think we've got a lot of stuff built in here. I think we've got a lot of money built in here. I think we've got a lot of time-consuming things built in here. And I just wanted to bring that up. So in, close, in my comments, my comments, I would like to see this streamline. Um, gosh knows we've had so much input that it's, that up till now it's probably coming out of people's eyes and ears. And do I think, do I think I'm an authority on this subject matter? Absolutely not. Please give me what you think, sir, is the best that's out there for well, here's what I'm asking for. And, uh, and, and uh, he's gonna give me the best. And then I got something to go with. But we got lots of steps in here. Lots of people can be dis disappointed. Lots of time. And that was my point. And that was my only point. And I don't think I made it very well because from what I've heard so far, but that's my point. And that's what I think that's what we ought to do. I think we ought to cut, cut bait and fish. And let's do this thing. Let's, let's find out what we want to put there, how much we're willing to spend. The board of, whether Board of Finance would just, the Board of Finance could be meeting right with us at that point in time. How much do we want to spend on this? Tell us, and here's what we're going to do. How much do we want to allocate to this? That's what the mayor's saying. The mayor's saying, tell us what, what, who are we, what do we want to do, how much do we have? So that, that's, that's my input on this. Um, 
I, I'm going to just leave it at that. I, I, I can't really add much more to that. If I'm not being very specific, it's my, my fault. Um, George, Jennifer, Vince, whoever, are we, are we giving him a budget? We, we have funds set aside in uh, the penny for Pinellas. Right, but are we giving him a dollar amount? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, what we set aside in Penny for Pinellas, we'll see what the estimates come out as, and then have to have to approach the city commission again. Because so. you're right. Because mm -hmm. I, what's the allocation? Do you remember? Three million. Yeah. Well, obviously, that's not the whole project, though. No. Is no. it out in later years? That's all that's in the penny for, right. for the project. I, oh, so and I that mean, was I, yeah, that's right because it's yeah, just period of penny. And we were going to do phasing, and <clears> you know, well. I, Okay. That, and, that's where the phase And there is discussion came. of ARPA, which none of that's not been decided in any way. What I want is a strong recommendation, you know. And I don't want us to be designing something to that three million dollars unless that works for the strong recommendation. You know. I think that what we need to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but uh, what did we have budgeted before? Because we, the three oh, million was, was never intended seven, to be. Seven million was seven the highest. Million. Okay. It was right. four million so that back at least in. It gives us a, a gauge. Two thousand nine, it was four four million, and then it went up to seven million before the pandemic. Seven million is the answer. And we brought it down to yeah. two million, and then seven million is the answer, Vince. Seven million. Yes, yeah, seven million. I just, don't I don't talk about lower be, numbers. <laughs> I also, I just want to know what the real recommendation is. Not that money is not an issue. Everybody's got to shop with their budget in mind. I absolutely agree. But I mean, you know, again, y'all are the experts. And when you're looking at around what everybody else has, when you're looking about what our needs are, when you're looking about who we, who we are serving and what's, what are we trying to offer, I want to know what that should be. And then you come back and talk about is it something we can achieve? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So can I just go back to the 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 question though of what I was mentioning earlier? But how I just laid it out now. Is there a way to come back bef before you create those master plans to to kind of talk about who we are and what you what your what you see, what all of you have seen after you get together as a informational thing so that we're not surprised, so to speak. Yes. It's not really a decision. We will schedule um, working with this timeline uh, a meeting for, for... understand what I'm asking? Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a touch point. It's a touch point. I mean, that's we're a good be, way to... Yeah, I mean, that's it's a good a way to put it. I just didn't want to be get too you know because we're not have, have we won't have had the community input we, you know so I don't want to start acts and stuff but at the same point right. it's a touch point which isn't a bad idea and the community input's going to be based on what you ultimately put out there so I kind of want to make sure that I know where everybody's heads at before that happens I think we should all make sure that we're kind of you know that you guys are okay with what's being said that Jennifer that us. Um, so it's not Adventure Island, and then we find out later. <laughs> or that it's, you know, or that it is coming back to be the long center because you found out that we need two competitive facilities. You know what I'm saying? We don't know. I just... So are we, are we thinking somewhere between the um, city review and the community meetings? No. Or no, after the I'm thinking before? after you determine, after you look at... He's not looked at the surveys. Um, you do your programming meetings. You talk about all of those things. I, I don't know what order. I just, I think, I'm not saying well, we have to. You're talking about before developing the master plan. Yeah. That's what I hear you say. Yeah. And and I, I am also a little concerned about the three master plans. I understand having that in there. Like it could mean, but I, I'd like to have a real strong recommendation. This is, this is what we recommend because of everything we've seen. And now, that doesn't say we shouldn't have some choices, and it may mean we say, we have you go back and do something else. <laughs> uh, we did that <laughs> in the city hall. I mean, that was a, I don't know. But Sometimes we, you get We choice. have a meeting on December 14th. I right. Mean, we wanted a brief touch point, just saying. So it doesn't I'm hold sorry, up the say process. Say it again. 
Well, we have a meeting, a work session, December 13th. So. Mayor, um, yes, if I may, I, I'd like to talk to staff and uh, talk to our consultant talk about what that would look like and when we could uh, feasibly bring it back to you, um, you know, given the information that you want today. I mean, because we would need to look at what's around us, right? Uh, we would need to look at, at the user numbers, at the survey and that type of thing, and to put together something that's comprehensive enough that you all feel we have fulfilled your request for the niche or who we are um, and that type of a thing. Also, um, two more things, if I may, Mayor, as it pertains to the finance plan, mm -hmm. I think it would be similar to City Hall in terms of we have, we have a ballpark. We need to put together exactly what, what it looks like in the conceptual plan the City Commission adopts and then work with finance. It'd be a combination <clears throat> of ARPA and penny funding to find out how it is that, that we are able to, to, to pay for the pool. Obviously, financing is extremely important. Sure. Um, and then the last thing is, is um, if, that if you want a, one strong recommendation, uh, as opposed to three concepts, I'd like consensus direction from all of you on that as well. I don't know. I, no, I, I like to, I know. you know, I like, I like to really flesh C options and then. Well, and you might be able to give us the, all three, but I, I would like kind of. Let me just say this. So, I don't know. I mean, obviously I want, I want to be part of the team, but I'm just worried that we're going to mess up the flow. I mean, our staff who, you know, Alicia's there. She sees what's already happening on the ground. What, what are people doing? She knows our community. Vince and his staff and Alicia have looked at what others, they've been to other places, they've visited other places, and they're working with an expert. You know, in, in my mind, if there's a touch point, maybe it's just before the community input meetings, because let them do their work. Let them kind of put it out there in terms of what they see that vision is, because they're in the front, you know, they're in the bunker. Uh, this is my view. Well, and I'm not disagreeing with you. But that would mean the master plans are done. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is I want to know who, who, is our, who is our target? Who, who are we? What's the niche we're trying to fill? Um, because I don't know. There may be disagreement on that. I don't know. I really think that we can get there. Do you understand what I'm trying to get at? I do. When you do that, I'm not exactly sure. I just want to make sure, because usually when you start to master plan something, just like we're going to be master planning the marina at some point, don't we want to understand who we're trying to serve at the marina? We're not, you know, not necessarily trying to serve. There's, believe me, there's different groups that you're trying to serve, right? That's all I'm trying to get at, but nobody has said that in this document. So I just want to make sure that we don't have surprises. But again, I, That's it. I think it's kind of in that last input thing that we got, which is here's what we want as minimum, and the other are amenities for seniors with the therapeutic pool, the lazy. I mean, I don't know. To me, it's kind of there. It's the it's okay. the community place to come, and and you do the programming for all ages. So I don't know. Maybe I'm. Yeah. No, I think that we did say it. I think it's intergenerational. I think our community is intergenerational. We have, you know, I mean, if you look at our statistics, you see how many are over 65. You see that there's a growing, there is a growing uh, kids and families, and we want to nourish that. Um, you know, so I, <laughs> if you guys don't. And it's not a competitive center. I think we all want to, to me, that's, okay, those well, are the but two see, big decisions. I, until we had this conversation today, yeah, no, I didn't know it. You know what I'm saying? Which is why I'm bringing it up. I want to make sure we're all on this. Same, we may not be the same page on how we achieve it, but that we're at least on the, all the same page of what it is. Mm -hmm. That's all I want to make sure of. Um, if you all feel that you're comfortable with that, then I'm not going to try to rock the boat. Well, what I want to make sure that we're doing is, we, in my input is, in, 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 in concert with, you, with what you just said, is that we do this as quickly as we can, and that we do this as efficiently as we can, and we do this with cost, realizing every penny that we spend on up to we have it is money that doesn't go into what we have because we spent it already. Let's spend it on what it what 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 it should what, be versus yeah, the real how to get there versus the extra with the yeah, what the cool thing. stuff is and yeah. he knows what the cool stuff is. You can just tell him how big of a spot you got and you put the cool stuff in there. 
And I don't know whether it's cool or not, but he knows whether it's cool or not. Yeah. In the first part on page two of um, George's proposal, and Commissioner Freeney was alluding to, I mean, these are the baseline things that we're going to need to operate a pool. You're going to need a, the, your main pool. You're going to need a bathhouse. You're going to need the office space and lobby and the guards room. Concessionaire, well, concessionary could go down below. Um, I would think it should stay up top. Um, all associated maintenance, you know, mechanical. And then down below are all those fun things that keep people there more, more than one hour. And those are the things like the lazy river, water slide, climbing wall, interactive spray. So I think the, the, first, the top part is the basic swim lessons, the basic lap swimming, um, take care of the, the swim teams. Uh, the second part of it becomes more of the, the fun opportunities. So I think, I think it's pretty well spelled out in, in uh, George's proposal Okay. on page two. Okay, and then when it comes to the, the three concepts, really all I'm trying to say is, okay, you can give us the three, I want to. I want to really, but I do want to. You want a recommendation? I do. Right. Or we we're do leaning in this direction, and here's, here's why we mm -hmm. believe. Yes, it's more expensive, but we believe we can achieve it. We'll give more details later because I know it's a. It's going to be a workshop, no decisions, mm -hmm. but we we believe we can achieve it. We can get it done cheaper now, and these extra amenities will bring us X, Y, and Z. Right. Yeah. Yes. I think, and that's no different than anything else we do. So yeah. I don't think I'm saying anything different. I just didn't, I don't want us having these three things and then we're all trying to fight yeah, over what's what. That's what I want to avoid. Okay. You know what I mean? I do. Okay. Mayor, I'm sorry, one more point of clarification sure. though. This touch point. I think we just gave up on it. Okay. You're good. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, okay. I, Thank but, you. and here's the thing for anybody watching, this is how the sausage is made, but the five of us have not had the opportunity to discuss this pool in a long time. This is the first time and we can't, it's not like we can talk behind closed doors. So Correct. how we approach this, I mean, yeah, it is how the sausage is made, but this is the sunshine law. So. One comment. Uh, well, I just want to finish my, can I finish my Oh, comments? sure. Yeah, I thought you were Let me, gonna, No, I, I was trying to touch on this. Okay, so, no problem. <laughs> it's all good. So teen uses... It was is, about your touch point, though. Oh, thank you. I go was ahead. just going to say, obviously, before renderings go to the community, either individually or together, we certainly want to see them, you know, to me, you know, so that if something, if, if something you see, you go, oh, my gosh, that's not what I was talking about. I need my colleagues to come back together. I mean, Well, you see what I'm saying. Right. That's why I was like, right. okay, well, we... Yeah. Is that possible individually? Yes. Okay. Individually. Actually, I think mm -hmm. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so teen usage to me is really important. When, when I was a kid, we had a teen center. Um, and I used to ride my bike to it. We've tried to kind of do that at the MLK Center, and it's, you know, not what it was when we had it at the Jones Building. <laughs> You know, and I hung out there on Friday and Saturday nights. I think the pool is a huge opportunity with programming, okay, for Friday, Saturday night, DJ, funky lights around the place, hangout. It's just for their use, right? Maybe it's once a month. I don't know. I'm not trying to dictate. But I think between programming and maybe a couple of the amenities, this is a real way for us to have a place for those 13 and ups to go. They're not in a car yet. Because it's, it's a huge, I watched it with my own kid. All of a sudden, the only thing, you know, there's, there aren't camps they want to go to at 13. I'm sorry. Now, they might be a CIT for camps, but they're, you know, they're not into cars yet. They're not. So I, I really want to have some of that thinking um, because I think there's a real opportunity there. Um, you know, kind of, you were mentioning the, I don't know if we need a lazy river, we don't want to be competing with um, Adventure Island, blah, blah, blah. Here's the difference today than when I was a kid going to the Virginia Street pool and then ultimately in high school hopping the fence at the Highlander pool when the top wasn't on, because I did that too. 
I'm <laughs> um, just being honest. It, it, I wasn't the only one. There were a lot of people doing you that. You could go ahead and arrest her now. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah, think there's a statute statute right. of limitations um, on that. <laughs> But back then, if Jeff, can you take over the meeting? The mayor's going to be arrested now. <laughs> back, back when we were going to the Virginia Street pool, which was much before that, um, you know, in the 70s, essentially, there wasn't a lot, there weren't as many pools going on in the world. So, yeah, you were just to spend the, the afternoon in a bigger pool with a bunch of friends. It was a different situation, you know? Um, however... So now that we do have more pools, what, how do you get people to come to the community pool? You have amenities that they don't have in their backyard. And they see other kids. Yeah. And, and they twins. Ha don't forget the right. twins. The yeah, twins the twe really so, don't have much. So you almost do need those amenities. And I'm sorry, I'm one for a lazy river. I, wanna, I want a lazy river. Um, and I think that it serves like a whole kind of thing. But here's another reason to have those fun, the fun, fun amenities, if you will. Um, these are affordable activities for families and engage our families, no matter what age their kids are. So if you've got a tween and you've got a five-year-old, you're still good. Mm -hmm. They can all go. Um, it's called qu quality of life in our community. And yes, we do our age range, you know, we're I've always said it. It's, we'll see what happens with this <clears throat> census once we can finally access the information. But we've historically been the highest saturation of 55 and older people in Pinellas County. Um, but there are a whole ton of, of people that move into Dunedin and want to raise their families here. Yeah, they might have a pool in their backyard. Maybe they don't. But this is something that's builds the quality of life for families, attracts people to our community, gives them something to do that's affordable because with their rec card living here, it'll be cheaper <laughs> than when the Palm Harbor folks, the Oldsmar folks, the Safety Harbor folks, the Clearwater folks, and believe me, they will all be coming. Um, then when they come, they will be offsetting some of those costs. When Thomas was young, and you can ask Janice Miller who works in the city clerk's office, we used to take our kids to the to the Largo pool. We never went near Dunedin's pool. And it was annoying because you had to drive all the way down there and you usually you tried to carpool and how many kids can one parent watch and you know. But that was that was a big deal. Those kids loved it. It was all summer long. That's what that's what we would do. And it wasn't cheap either. It was not cheap. Um so I do think there is a place for these amenities um, as an adventure island. It's not just the 30 bucks to get in. You got to pay the parent to get in too and the kid, you know. And I do think an, an answer in programming that might help with the spray ground issue, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's certain times of the day for those little, little tykes that, you know, if there's an area and maybe it's fenced off, or something where they can just go that maybe the maybe that's free I but I do think it all needs to be together so that it can be supervised but the, I think you can do those things through programming there's a certain time of the day or there's certain whatever and you all can take a look at that um, I like the intergenerational And when you do bring it back the plans, I think I would ask all of you if you bring back your concepts for programming because I do think that it's not just what it looks like, it's what you're going to do with it. It tells a bigger story. And it's and it to us as well as to the community. I'm not saying every detail, but we're going to do these kinds of things. I think that would be important. I like the idea of the volleyball. I like the idea of both kinds of volleyball. You know, any anytime there's an activity, bless you, that's in the pool, you know, you're going to get all different ages that can use it. And maybe there's a little kid one and a bigger kid one. I, you know, or, and a more adult one. Um, I think the outdoor activities, as Peg mentioned, you know, picnic areas, um, 
cornhole, all of those kinds of things are important and I think we need what we need with that building since we are all in agreement that we're not messing with our great lawn. So we need a building that's gonna do what it needs to do. Uh, I think that was it. You had something you wanted to add and I know Vice Mayor did too. No, I think I got it in about the touch point. Okay. But, but I, I did love the comment you made, so I'll reiterate it because it's right on. It is an affordable place for our families to be, our intergenerational families to be. And again, I mean, and it's in our community. So, I mean, it's, it's a really great comment. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, again, I love intergenerational. I, I think it should should be everything that it can be. My biggest concern are is affordable housing is outrageous. All that we do is complain about the McMansions in here. I've heard complaints from at least one elementary school, if not other, the contrary to families coming in, that actually they feel that families are not coming in and the population of the schools are showing it. And so that people can't afford to live in Dunedin anymore. So the fact that this is affordable and not affordable, I don't want that measurement of affordability to be, among us, it's less than some water park in Orlando. It, that, that can't be it. It's less than $30, so it's good, it's affordable. It has to be affordable for the families who are going to use it. For the, for the houses and the families that don't have pools in their backyard, there's a reason why they don't have pools in their backyard. And so this has to be a true affordable place where they can go. Um, we certainly need to focus at some point on the south side. Thank you, Commissioner Kynes, for bringing that up. Um, just the way it is, kids aren't riding bikes anymore. That, that's unacceptable to me that that's what the multimodal plan is all about and we should be incorporating bike lanes. We should be forcing ourselves to look for ways for people to get from A to B outside of their cars. And so kids should be free to ride their bikes. That's something that we should, that's the way we all grew up. Why, why is that stopping now? So there should, and I know I'm digressing from the pool, but it's all about kids, right? This is what this is about. And getting to the pool, there should be free avenues of riding their bikes to the pool. Um, but again, to me, when I was talking about affordability, it's on two scales. One, can the city afford to build it? But then also, who are we building it for? That affordability really has to be looked at. And I was questioning when I heard the comments of Margo has had some uh, revenue recovery. I'm, I'm hoping that sounds like that came from the non-Largo residents. Yes, so because supporting. a lot of non-Largo okay. residents go there. That's what I was Rented, trying to say. You know, okay. facilities yeah, that's, it's not, you, no, I, that, that, I, I think that's affordability fine. is important. Okay. Um, and that was my only concern yeah. is we look at all these bells and whistles to make sure that we're, we're understanding the demographic that we use. This was my only concern. So. Any final comments from you guys? Uh, you know, I just want to say I would not put my eight and 11 year old on the Pinellas Trail by themselves to trek up to Michigan. I would not do that. I, you know, so I've got, you know, I've see, I'm really seeing it where how far, you know, they can go without me in attendance. Um, and I, so it's not as easy as just you know, it, it was totally different when we were little. I mean, I ran all over the place. No one, you know, there weren't any thoroughfares. There was one road. But, you know, I'm just saying that there is an issue of saying they, well, in the south side, they can get on, you know, the Pinellas Trail and just go put your 8-11-year-old eight, eight on. And yeah, no, I mean, forget it. I will not do, me. I would never allow that. But I, I will, wasn't implying that. No, but I I'm will sorry. tell you that, like, I think Thomas started, I mean, he would ride his bike to school, but that was a back road. At, at, that was in third grade, but I think it was right around um, middle school, sixth grade, which I think is, what, 12? Right. Yeah. Something like that. Okay. Then he started riding his bike. Oh, 13 or 14. Yeah, he maybe, started but. He started riding his bike to school, which was yeah. across Curlew. He started riding his bike from our house, which is on Michigan, to or County Road 1 to the community center. So, yeah, it is a certain age range. When we were kids, I mean, I was eight years old going everywhere. I was all over the place. So it is different, I will say. It's different. But anyway, any further comments, um, Commissioner Tronga? 
No, I'm just after, it's, I'm just want to, I'll reiterate, efficiency, target, and we got an expert here. And so if we start choosing whether we want to have gray on the wall or white on the wall or blue on the wall, I think, <coughs> I think he can probably give us an idea of what we ought to have and unless, unless he chooses purple. No, I like purple. No, I'm kidding. So we get, if we get too much involved up here at this point, and if we're not careful, we'll get a lot of advisory committees involved in a lot of things and a lot of meetings that go on that they feel compelled to sit and try to do something with, and they're going to do the same thing. And they're not, they're not experts at any of it. Perhaps they're not experts at any of this as, as well. So, got an expert. You are an expert. That's, I'll leave it at that. And Vince, I'll just say to you that, uh, um, you know, with your committees you were talking about, it might be a tight schedule. You might just want to call all three of them together. We've done that before. For one meeting, you know, versus trying to, I'm just saying, to save yourself some time. But, okay. Uh, Jennifer, do you feel that the input that you've heard, Vince, George, everybody else, do you feel like you've got the input that you need, want, or didn't want to begin with? I don't know, but do you feel like you know what? What, where we're going? I do, Mayor, and I'll have Vince speak up if he needs anything else. Yeah, and I just wanted to clarify the um, the the phase discussion. That was mainly because of funding. I no, that, that and was nobody's condemning that. Again, this is the first time we've had a chance to talk, and I even in gender review, Jennifer said, "I don't know what he said." She said, "Everybody else," she said, "This is your time to talk about the whole phasing thing if you want to talk about it," because we haven't really had an opportunity to do that. So it's nothing that you all did wrong or incorrectly. It's just a person. So I guess the only question is the, the funding, Jennifer, and I think you wanted to meet separately and then make a recommendation to the. Yeah, we don't have to. I don't think we should determine that at this point. Right. I think we need to know what you all, when you look and say this is the perfect plan, this is, you know, this is the thing that I can get excited about. That's when you're going to figure it out. If Alicia's excited, I'm going to be excited. Yeah. I'm very excited. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over the okay. All right. N thank you, everybody. Oh, we need a motion. Uh, is there a motion to approve this um, process? No. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, master plan. I'll move. Second. Second. Third. Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Kynes. Okay, uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, we have a proposed agenda. Uh, are you sure, George? Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting out of here fast. <laughs> Okay, we have a proposed agenda for um, our work session, the next work section, which is November 30th. Um, anybody have any changes? Uh, I have one addition, Mayor. Sure. Um, to add the, um, just a 10 minute discussion of an overview on the charter questions that you all asked about, we'll be prepared to do that on the 30th. And I recommend uh, you know, that we that keep... Is, that is going to be a conversation. It won't be 10 minutes. Um, I'd like to at least get you the information on the decision points that there's one decision point that needs to be made before December 31st. So I'm just concerned that if we push it to into December, we're going to lose additional time. Um, I could just keep it as a brief overview just so you know what the decision points that you're going to need to make are, and then we can do a more in-depth okay, work the session. Reason I, the only reason I'm bringing it up is that we have the sustainability plan on this meeting and for the golf club and you know that's going to be another yeah. long conversation so I'd at least just like to you all have a high level of what your decision points are before the 31st so that way you all have enough time okay so we, and don't let us talk just don't let us say anything <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah we'll, ch we'll chat ahead of time <laughs> yes. um anything else that we think is going to be changed around or I have a question. When is the Brick Street discussion going to happen? Because I know it was originally on here, but now it's moved. To and it. I asked for it earlier because I will be gone. And that is a bad thing because yes. someone needs to be here, you know, 
Yeah, well, both of us, I write. Yeah, them. for the Breck Streets. And so when you Can have I it, send you the date under separate cover because I don't have it? It's in January. That's what I saw it. And I said, oh, no, I'll be gone. I can't even talk. We'll make sure that you're here. Um, but I'm yeah, not sure exactly. Yeah. Put her out there. I'm not sure exactly what the date is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, and I'm not going to draw this out, but I can but tell I you already the places you that, that our friend. crews have spent forever, mm -hmm. you know, spent a lot of time and labor on, uh -huh. on Santa Barbara, they're already sinking. You know, um, so I just I, think I'm we have sorry. to have the discussion. I, I can't hear what the mayor is. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, hey, okay. Bob, Bob, we're almost done. Can you just wait one second? Thank you. Uh, can I have a Mayor, motion? I'm sorry, I did not hear what Commissioner said. You, for the Brick Streets, you're, you have a date it's that you can't attend. It's sinking, you said. No, I was just making the point that all the labor days, and probably a couple of weeks that they spent out on Santa Barbara, some of those places are already sinking. Okay. I mean, so yeah. I'm just saying it's a discussion we have to have. So I just don't want it to just keep moving. Okay. So. All right, I'll okay. send you the date under separate yeah. cover. Awesome. Right. And, and so, so moved. I move approval of the agenda. Okay, Commissioner Franey. Second. Commissioner Kynes. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 But Any I opposed? still do want you to move. Any opposed? <laughs> Motion passes unanimously, <laughs> and that's with the addition of um, the charter. charter. Yeah, and I don't know exactly where you add that on there. Uh, I guess it would be, well, it's informational. So I guess you would add it prior to the uh, sustainability plan? That's fine, or I'm fine if you all want to even put it as the city attorney report, and then that way, okay. you know, that's we'll fine. very brief, and I'll try to, and we'll have the bullet points to you in advance. Okay, then we have the December 2nd regular commission meeting. Um, this is the commission meeting with um, the Sterling Hotel on it, so which will be a long meeting. Um let me ask you this question. Do we need to have the witch's presentation on this particular night? Because that's a 10-15 that's a minute. I'm not sure who re requested it on that evening. I just think it's a bad night no, to mix I think, it. I'll tell you who, how that happened. Actually, the <coughs> requested it on that meeting. No, I'm I sure. I wanted to be sure and get... I mean, I said, are we going to do it? But he said, we will handle that because, you know, they're giving all that right. money to the Coots no, no. Fund. I'm just wondering if we can do it we can look at a different let me see. date. Uh, we can look at I'm just trying to squeeze. a lot of them to get together, too. So, I mean, if you can move it, but that may be a problem, too. So. Yeah, and if it, I don't know. I mean, hopefully, it's I'm not trying to be difficult, but this is going to be a long meeting. We have the vice mayor selection. We have the commission rules and procedures. Commission liaison appointments and our travel policy. Um, it's just a lot to cover. And then the next meeting in December will be similar. So we yeah, we'll work to move it, man. Yeah. If we can where will you move it? If the They're witches don't inside. put a spell on us, That's we'll problem. Be fine. Yeah. where will you move it? I mean I agree with you because I think that one item was gonna take the whole night, but well, and it was two and a half hours for LPA. Right. Yeah. And it'll be it'll be longer for us. It will absolutely be longer for us. So, yep. I you know it'll at least be three hours. I think. We'll have to come with it 16th. If I um, let me look at that, and then I can reach out. I think it was just it needed to be a night meeting because most of the yeah, witches work. Yeah, lady. And yeah, so I believe were. that that was just discussion. <laughs> most of the witches work. <laughs> what else do you know? <laughs> <laughs> They've got a lot to do out there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, I mean, yeah. presentations aren't required. I mean, we don't have to vote right. on those. So can I have a motion to approve the December 2nd agenda? So move. Second. Commissioner Franey and Commissioner Kynes, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. There's five minutes um, left. We are, obviously, you're not getting to our legislative priorities. You'll figure out where to put that? We will, yes. Okay. And um, uh, is there anything from city manager or city attorney updates that we need to have? No? I have nothing. No, goes for, uh, you're staying for our pre-closing? Yes. So we've got our closings going on this week for the Dunedin Station parking lot and, uh, and the financing. So that's my only update. Okay. Uh, anything from your area? Okay. Any, anything that anybody feels like we have to know? 
I, yes. Yeah, I have one. But go ahead. Well, I mean, this is our last meeting before Thanksgiving, and we all need to wish everyone well, we, we would do a lovely that. I'm just talking about the you know, <laughs> informational points. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say, and, and I'll make sure to coordinate with Andrea, opening day for spring training is February 27th, oh. which is a Sunday. Um, so we'll need to kind of, and we're playing the Phillies, you know, nothing personal, but it would have been excited to get to have somebody other than the Phillies. But because the mayor's challenge is, per, is tentatively scheduled for March 11th, and that's a Friday. Those are afternoon games, and, uh, you know, that's going to be the Phillies. Can, so make sure Phillies these, are, yeah. can somebody make sure these get in our Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll talk to Andrea after this. Um, tentatively, it's not, not absolutely finalized, but it's 90% there, uh, the Toronto trip is look we're looking at june 3rd 4th 5th so um and um any news on the uh welcome back event uh the welcome back blue jay event uh we've i've discussed it with the chamber and with the blue jays and the blue jays prefer to start discussions in january because they've got a lot of issues coming up including you know the looming potential strike yeah, so yeah. they want to wait yeah, until oh hopefully it's not going to you know be a thing but but bottom line is uh, they preferred to talk about it in yeah. January but we have some ideas on the table okay. um, and I think I think it'll be good I mean everybody wants to kind of be a player in it and then the only other date and I'll have again Andrea put it on I think the the major pride event day um, is looking to be June 11th which it could be the following weekend after the, the Toronto trip well, um, and uh, we, and it'll culminate with a game at uh, a game at the Blue Jay Stadium um, at six thirty. So. What did you say? The mel the welcome back. I she doesn't know yet. You, you yeah, the welcome. You it, we're in discussions. I mean, okay. we're you know we're probably not going to get into real detail till January. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything that we have to know? No. No. Okay. We hey. are adjourned. Oh, you didn't oh. say happy things. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, All right, everybody. Fun. One, two, three. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you for watching this City of Dunedin government meeting. If you'd like to review any part of this meeting or watch any previous government meeting coverage, you can watch these meetings online anytime through the city's website, DunedinGov.com. Stay connected with everything Dunedin. Follow the city on this channel and on the city's Facebook page, through Twitter, and on the city's YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching this Dunedin Television production.